How many friends do you really have? People you confide Two. in. Two. Confide in. Oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> confide in. One. Who is that? Beth. That is not your friend. Who is I'm it? Why about couldn't a it be your friend? But why well, could she be, be my friend? She could be your friend, but she's your wife. I'm talking about oh. friends. Well, she just outside. became my wife. Oh, stop it. She All right, I have one other. My psychiatrist. <laughs> That's not a friend. I don't confide in any friends. I, I, I wouldn't trust them. I wouldn't trust any of my friends. Just to see who my friends are. Well, that's what you call a friend. <laughs> Somebody you can trust. Nah. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, I would say Don Buckwell, my agent. I would say I'm so close to him. He knows everything that if I, I know I can go to him and tell him anything and he won't judge me. I don't know if it's a friend. And I've told him some but shit. But that's another person you pay. Yeah. I don't have yeah. any friends I don't pay. You do a show here. If it's successful or not, it doesn't matter. And uh, the one thing I don't respond well to is humiliation. I don't respond well to it at all. You know, I don't want to be told what a shithead I am. I don't want to. Be, you know, I, this, those days are over. I've, I've suffered enough in this business. I don't need to, to find out what a shithead I am. Listen, there are people who are at a job too long. They, 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 they're not into it. They can't admit it to themselves. But nobody cares around here. Nobody sits here and gets worried about ratings. It's a joke. We don't need ratings here. So I'm, cured. I'm not going to be cured of any. I am me. I am just going to a psychiatrist so that I can feel better about certain issues in my life. That's all. Yeah, somehow I believe Leno will just end up at 1130. But anyway, they're, gonna, they're announcing today that, first of all, Jay Leno is such a douchebag. He's the number one late night guy. He gets like 20 million a year. He could be getting 50, 60 million a year. But he doesn't want it. Like, that just skeeves me out and makes me think he's a bigger asshole than I have ever... You know, it's just like, oh, what is that? Like, what? why is it you won't take more take money? The money yeah. Like, what are, you, what are you trying to prove? You're every man. You're making $25 million. I mean, That's no one's relating no every to you. Man. Yeah, exactly. He's like, eh, I got enough money. Eh, you know, I live on my stand-up. And... Welcome, everybody, to Quite Frankly... The Howard Stern Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Moore, and with me, of course, is my co-host with the most, Sam. Hi. And we're doing our second, uh, well, third, actually, technically, breakdown of the Howard Stern Show as of the week of March, uh, not the week of March, the days of March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, it was the week prior to the Wednesday where he was missing. And um, we're going to talk, talk about the Harry Styles interview, um, a few other things. But that's going to be predominantly what we're talking about because it was just Projection 101. But we've got a few other things in store for you, so hope you enjoy it. Now, first thing up for grabs. Are we going to talk about the little comments, Sam? We sure. Got so um, I love our fans. They're so fun. And they leave awesome comments on our YouTube page. Uh, I also love honesty, even if it isn't the nicest. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading from Rob Skitty. Uh, he says, you're great, Fillmore. Yay. But your co-host, uh, your co-host, annoying, fake outrage. Hey, what? And she's pointing out, th she's pointing out <laughs> things he has said, like a SJW. Would that be Stuttering John? SJW? No, SJW is a social justice warrior. Oh, fuck. That's intense. <laughs> not <laughs> not So you I not, guess you must not be one because you would know what that meant. <laughs> That's true. I would know that acronym. Uh not pointing out the contradiction, just the outrage that he said that. Uh, and then he said that I was great on the first episode, but I'm killing the comedy. Well, unfortunately, I'm angry in some episodes more than others. I'll try to curb my anger and my social justice warriorism. <laughs> can you can you push the mic a little closer? Sure, of course. Yeah. Is that better? I think a little better, yeah. Um, well, Rob Skitty, first of all, he wants—he doesn't want me to block him. Uh, love you, Rob, but you know, I, I fuck up too. Um, the last episode was the Lena Dunham episode, and I will apologize both for that because I had to um, break from that uh, a bunch of times. I think that was the Lena Dunham one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. We had a. Sh 
we had a shit ton of issues that one. I was sick. You were uh, dealing uh, with your wife who was sick. Yeah. Right. And so then it was a lot, a lot of she, breaks. Oh, yeah. And then you had to switch. You had to do all the uh, online classes. And that was just terrible. <laughs> yeah. So as a result, and, and my, uh, sorry, Sam was on cough syrup. So was it NyQuil? Should we give them a plug? Like Peloton? Um, I think it was DayQuil. I just took so much of it that day that, I, you, what's it called when you, I think it's called Robo. No, no idea. Probably. That would be a new one for me. That, that, that's my I don't think I was. I'm joking. I don't think I was really doing that, but I was a little off. You, so I apologize. Were, and I will exhausted. try not to kill. Yeah, I was so exhausted. I will try not to kill the comedy and I will try not to be an SJW. Thank you for informing me what that is, though. I never knew that. At least I'm not stuttering, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Every time he smacks his hand in the in the sort of this, that's his own sound effect. Like the Stern Show used to do hand claps. Now he's doing the. I'm gonna. This is me smacking somebody off the air. Um, this one is uh, kind of a reverse. Well, not well, not a reverse, but it's a good one for Sam. Comment to be read. Okay, sorry. From Baby Boomer Channel. Hello, Baby Boomer Channel. Sam gets oh, better like every show. Sam gets better every show. Uh, this was a really good one that covers a lot of ground. I've come to decide that every, every, ever since the last contract was signed, that there's been a plan to target a Netflix interview show after he leaves Sirius with all his tapes. He goes on to make money in, on an interview show like Letterman. The last four years have all been about turning him from, not four years actually, it's been well, at least since, two, since, at least since 2013 when Mar the Marcy Edict took over. Uh, turning him from shock doc, jock to the greatest interview of all time. It was Buckwald's vision, and Marcy is the person that executes the plan. There must be a Marcy Buckwald connection somewhere. Stern isn't smart enough. Well, uh, the problem I have with the Netflix idea is the fact that, first of all, he has a work ethic that's non existent. He tried to shop Netflix when he did the birthday bash in 2013, I think, or oh, 2013 or 14. Which year was that? 14. 14. 14. And they, number one, they couldn't sell out the place, first of all. They couldn't sell out tickets for the place. You don't think Ted Sarandos would be in attendance looking at the empty chairs or empty balconies and they then also not talked know to, that the gig was up? Right. And they also talked about, even on Superfan Roundtable, how poorly produced it was in the sense that they, he had a David Letterman interview during the middle of this party, which made absolutely no sense. And nobody could even hear what was going on unless you sat at the tables and put on your headphones. That's, so, a, that's always, that's always fun. That's a good time. Just silent film on stage. <laughs> My favorite part, we probably, I wouldn't do a breakdown of the, uh, we wouldn't do a walkthrough of that fucking birthday bash. Cause it's four hours. It's literally four hours. Um, and if somebody God, ever made me up. stay at a birthday party for four hours of a 60 year old person and they're not fun, I would be livid when it wasn't <laughs> stay their in your seat and we won't feed you. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> my favorite. One of my favorite parts of that was when they when they start off the thing and you hear the Rob Zombie music. It's clear that Rob Zombie and Rob, Rob Zombie and the band that there's people are shuffling in. So they were filming this before anything happened because they might have had to do three, four takes. Who knows? And we, music like that, it's it's tough to it's tough to get right to sound right to begin with. So it was probably a sound check that they recorded and then they filmed audience like view. You know, people were sitting down. No one cared. And you could see it in the thing. You could see in the video. There's no one at these tables, and you hear the music going on. So yeah, nobody uh, and everybody was wandering around aimlessly, especially Beth. I, that was my favorite, watching her wander around with her hand in the air and a glass of wine in the other. <laughs> yeah, she was doing the Richard Nixon salute. Um, I think that he, if he does go to Netflix, if he goes to Netflix or something like that. Remember, Whale Rock guys, let's not let's not give Wiggy more credit than he deserves. He's not exactly the master uh, negotiator. Uh, his interviews are horrend horrendous, and you'll hear it during this Harry Styles breakdown that we do because he, he, it's all projection. It's all projection. Show me that I'm as retarded as I – show me that I'm as – you're as neurotic as I am and my neuroses are normal or my demented behavior is acceptable behavior. So I don't think he's going to Netflix, and he'll have to take – this is the situation. In 2015, he re-signed with Sirius 
And in order to leverage the amount of money he wanted or as close to that more money that he wanted, he had to include not just the five years from now till from 2015 to now, but 12 years of the archival videos and or if, if he still has the rights to them or and the um, the audio, his archives, basically. So until 2000, uh, sorry, um, 2027, they have the rights to his stuff. So he has nothing to bargain with at Sirius. And there's no competition. They bought Pandora. They bought. Didn't they buy iHeartRadio as well? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so not entirely positive, but right. there's no X, there's no XM anymore. They amalgamated. So where can he go in in that format? The only way to get any kind of um, independence is for him to start his own podcast. No way that's happening. Now, I have a question about his uh, the the records of all of his stuff that he has his tapes mm. now mm. that he's editing the tapes do they have can they i don't know put a lawsuit against him for changing the content of his own old shows that they bought the rights to serious you mean yeah well he if he if he retains the rights he has that means he has creative control over them so he can edit what he likes i think but we might need to get um uh, Sal's master shake on this carry. Uh, he might, cause he's a lawyer. He might know a little bit more about this. Um, he, I imagine he has a clause in there that allows him to do what he wants with the clips and has, and tells them, look, this is what you can play. This is what you can't, because we all know from the stuttering Jung book that there's a red list. And we may, we may review that one guys in the future for a podcast as part of our stuttering John park podcast. Um, but uh, if there's a red list for guests, I imagine there's a red list for Sirius as well. No, don't do this. You can have the rights to this. You can play all of this, but don't play this and edit all this stuff out. So there's not much they can do about it. And even if he does get a Netflix interview show, which I highly doubt, he's going to have the same um, guests that we've already heard. N nobody wants to hear Alec Baldwin again. He gives the same interview every time to everyone that comes in the studio. He never cared about Saturday Night Live, and now every time he has somebody in that cast, it's like war stories that he wants to hear. What? Well, he he had to pay the people to appear at his fucking birthday bash. Like it was it was given out that there was a budget for that thing, and people were paid appearance fees for showing up and being able to be on. Uh, I'm some sure some people did it for nothing, like Letterman might have, but I doubt it, or just expenses. But bands and stuff, you don't think Rob Zombie got paid to be there and play? And uh, whoever else, Adam Levine? You think he went in as a super fan and said, no way, no way. No way. I, I also remember, too, during that time period, Opie and Anthony losing their shit because they just wanted things like better microphones and a television set, and they could not get it. They were just getting the runaround. And meanwhile, the company's spending millions of dollars on a birthday party versus <laughs> which was which wasn't even his birthday it wasn't even it wasn't even actually that day and they did it if, if, to the best of my knowledge they did it around super bowl weekend so that people would be in town um because worst yeah, run company ever <laughs> honestly the worst um so that's uh so that's our opinion on the Netflix thing. I don't know that there's any truth to it whatsoever. I mean, they could be courting, but he's got nothing to bargain with, and they know what are they going to get him for three and in one interview a week and and Netflix like Netflix is famous for giving out shitty money to people that don't deserve it. Hello, Amy Schumer. Um, but uh, that they that they'd be so stupid to give him a guy that doesn't have a creative bone in his body and has proved it for the last ten years. Uh, no way. I just don't see it happening. They might throw him a bone, but it would be horrendous and, and perfect for us because we could dissect those shitty interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm of two minds. I kind of want him to get it. You can never make me watch the leather special by Amy Schumer ever again, though. <laughs> did, did you see that? Oh, my God. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. So but hold on. Did you see? Did you? Now this is a question. Did you watch it because you heard it was awful or because you thought it might be you were just taking a chance or it just happened to be on? Let's check it out. It, it, yeah, I watch stand up all the time on Netflix. So it says, since you've watched this, and then, you know, it recommends the next thing when you're done with mm -hmm. a special. So it recommended mm -hmm. that. And I was like, eh, fine, I'll just keep put this on. It was so bad. Mm -hmm. I can't, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the other, uh, there's another couple of comments. Uh, and one of them has to do with the, um, the, 
I, they say quitting, firing, you choose your favorite story, guys, of Brent from the Howard Stern Show. And I, first of all, I never thought, and we might have mentioned this on the last one with Lena Dunham, I might have said it, so I'm sorry if I repeat myself, guys. I'd never cared, to, I gave, never gave a fuck about Brent, uh, and I don't think, I don't think that rating Bubba's shit show for content made <laughs> the Howard Stern show look any better. And I don't know what he was there for except to replace Ronnie's, you know, anal pegging and shit, threesomes and all this shit fetish, not shit fetish, but like, <laughs> a- like asshole like- fetish. Like if the hills had eyes with orgies, it's so terrible. <laughs> oh God, he's like anyway, and so and that the 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 thing with Brent was, uh, the, according to do you want to read the Reddit thing, uh, Sam? What was yeah. it? Was it on? It was on Reddit, right? Okay. Well, just his. Where is that? Mm, I sent you the link. So, oh, that was that post. Yeah, it was it was a scan of a, a twi- tweet, I think, because he put it out everywhere officially, and then people started commenting on it. Right. And you got it? I can't move my screen. I'm sorry. Want me to get it? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is take from the, his take, Twitter. Edit, edit that out. Oh. <laughs> All right. So on Twitter, it says, Brent Hatley, uh, after six great years, I've decided to leave Sirius XM Pandora. When does it officially become, when did it officially become that? Here, I want me to read it? Second. All right. Have you got it? I'm reading it from your screen. Okay. Okay. Ready. So Brent Hatley posted this and he said, after six great years, I've decided to leave Sirius XM Pandora. I didn't know that it became Sirius XM Pandora. I knew that they acquired that, but I didn't know they were naming the company that. Interesting. Mm. I'd like to thank Howard Stern for his kindness and for the opportunity to work on his show and channels on two different occasions. Some of the best work of my career was done there. Oh, God. The, the staff on air and behind the scenes at the Howard Stern channels are people that worked and perform at the highest level every single day. Oh, my God. If <laughs> Performing at the highest level is jerking people off, painting ball sacks, and, you know, showing asshole fissures. I don't, I can't imagine. I can't welcome to ra- imagine. Ra- welcome, welcome to Radio Proctology, folks. Talk about uh, padding the resume. It was an honor to it was an honor to work alongside each and every one of them. I will miss them all dearly. I'm sure they do not care one bit you're gone. I bet no. they'll miss your wife's uh, boob flashing every day, though. Uh, to the fans of the Howard Stern Show, you are truly the most unique and wide ranging. I'm sorry. <laughs> my fan fan base base in all entertainment it's been a humbling experience to perform for you on air and behind the scenes thank you from the bottom of my heart for any amount of time that you spent listening while i was a part of the show my newest endeavor will be announced today at 5 p.m the 2 p.m pdt which is his newest endeavor is twitch which cool (laughs) yeah yeah Twitch, you know, okay, fine, whatever. If it makes you feel happy, Brent. Um, then what? Um, what was more interesting? I think the same day or roughly the same week, uh, Crazy Days and Nights posted a blind item, and it says, according to this, is March twelfth. Uh, apparently, there is not anything restricting this former radio producer from giving up every secret of his permanent A-list boss. It would probably probably fill multiple books. Now, first off, I've I have to say, people, I have gotten in touch with Enti the. Um, see Dan guy before when we were still at the old place and um, he's actually been helpful uh, a couple times uh, even though he doesn't say a lot anytime I need some dirt or I have some dirt and I ask him to ver- verify it it's 50 50 sometimes he will sometimes he'll give me a link to he won't say anything but he'll give me the link that proves something is true and this one confuses me because why wouldn't Brent have signed an NDA with the show um, and why wouldn't he be at this point in time, if he was, if he was there six years, then it was after Marcy Turk, he would have, they would have insisted a guy like that signed an NDA. Right. I, I agree with you. I don't know though, during this climate of people being allowed to break NDAs for the sake of these movements seems to be rising though, where the yeah. NDAs were silencing people and they're making it so most judges are just not uh, abiding by it mm-hmm. in order to hear victim stories. 
Well, yeah, and if you have to be, if you're, if you're, if if you're mandated by a court to testify, that would break an NDA, no matter what state you were in. If you were in, if you were court ordered to explain something, if there was a lawsuit or a class action suit, that would the not, the end NDA would not be binding, as far as I know, at least in a court. So then it would get out there. Um, but um, I, and I don't even know what what how many more secrets is Brent going to know than everybody else through the pipes maybe some maybe some back office a back office gossip but i'm not sure i know i never got the feeling that he was that inside either so right and then there was there was scuttlebutt ages ago that landmark he was part of landmark forum that robin um joined as est back in the day and just became part of it again she never really left i suppose or she went back and if that's true and i asked brett actually on twitter ages ago and he never responded and I'm thinking, if you weren't, you'd say no, but he didn't respond. Right. Who knows? Yeah. And that would make sense. Uh, they, they seem to have cult members uh, plenty there. I mean, TM's a cult. Uh, Est is a cult. Um, getting things done is absolutely a cult when you read the literature. And that might, be a, that might be good for another deep dive, the whole getting things done cult status. Is it a cult or not? But we'll, we'll work on that another time. So the other thing was the um, the... It was a Reddit blind that from February 18th or so, and someone went on Reddit and talked about Scott Salem, because uh, Scott Salem being let go. And I read this the first time, and I thought, it sounds right, but people on Reddit were shitting on the original poster, so I'll read it. And for all of you who follow us, we've also been asked to talk about this. So um, and, uh, I've lurked here for years and finally have something to offer. So thanks for the years of fun and here's my repayment. I know someone who works at Sirius XM in New York who knows I'm a huge Stern fan. I was with them this weekend and they let me in on some inside info that's crazy. They work for a different channel but are very friendly with the back office guys. Here is everything I remember. So if he's friendly with the back office guys, they're talking. And if there's any loyalty, they, by the way, this, this shouldn't get out. But clearly they're not happy and they, they feel shitty for him. Um, Howard, uh, Howard apparently has not talked to Scott since a little bit before his wife passed away. Everyone agrees it's shitty on Howard's part. I think this was when <laughs> he said, Scott, me and Beth are, we're so sorry for your loss. We're going to make a donation to North Shore Animal League in Robin's name. Oh my God. Or some cancer, uh, charity in there, in his wife's name. Could you be any less sincere? Le or sensitive. I, if I were Scott, I'd probably knock him in the face. I probably would punch him in the face and risk the lawsuit because that's from what we understand originally, by the way, guys, the um, it wasn't that Scott was uninsured. It's the what do you call it? Um, convalescent care, not convalescent care, hospice care, I guess. Like right. her cancer treatments might have been paid for, but looking after her, the stuff she needs at the house, maybe a lift, things like that, that were probably all out of pocket for Scott. So he probably did need Plus, a shitload of money. I'm sure he needed a substantial amount of time off, and we all know how well he does with leave. Look at Tim Sabian. Uh, I need to take some time off to take care of my ailing cancer-stricken father. Why don't you just take forever off? See ya. Why don't you just take forever <laughs> off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Howard apparently has not talked. Yeah, okay, so it's shitty on Howard's part. Howard or whoever in charge, whoever's in charge moved him out of the office we would see, we'd all see on Howard TV back in the day to another floor. Now, that happened years ago. That happened when probably five years ago. Uh, but it says here, a few months ago, they moved him out of an office he shared with Brent and moved him into a cubicle next to a bunch of production assistants. It sent Scott off and he lashed out screaming at everyone around him. <laughs> I could totally see that. Um, that same week, it happened to be the Christmas party and now this is where it gets good. Scott either has a new girlfriend or friend who was filming Howard, <laughs> filming Howard give a speech to the staff, which is unheard of for secrecy reasons. It's also unheard of for Howard to give a fucking speech, by the way. Uh, and without a team of writers behind him. Um, that woman, Marcy, reprimanded Scott and his girlfriend or friend. She told the friend to delete it and prove that it was deleted. It sent Scott over the edge. Scott was screaming and staffers told him to cool off. Apparently, Howard followed him to find out what the screaming was about. Scott screamed that Howard has been a terrible friend through all of his troubles and that he ca all he cared about was that, quote, cunt Marcy. People could hear Scott yelling, but not what Howard was saying in response. Probably because he was hiding behind a fucking speaker. 
Um, Scott has not been seen around Sirius XM since then, and there are new people sitting in the cubicles that he once sat at. My friend asks the Stern people, what's, so what's up with Scott? And they say he's suspended, but we've hired new people to take over his job. So I don't know. <laughs> That's about it, because a good an answer is, it is what it is. <laughs> so... Uh, I, it, it, what is, it, what is Marcy the secret police? What is this North Korea? Show me it's deleted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a union worker. He knows enough to know that that can't. You can't make somebody do anything like that. Is Marcy the police? Is this a murder investigation? What is? I, There's the road. You're at a from restaurant. The dig- from the from the digging I I got, and I don't know how I can't. I can't guarantee the veracity, but he wasn't union anymore once he got to Sirius, which I find it hard to believe he'd just suddenly go non-union to get, maybe to get a pay bump at the new job, he would. I don't know. I would never give up my union benefits or protection to go there. Uh, maybe he had nowhere else to go. I have no idea. Um, but um, and, and to the point where when he was caught producing his band, son's band, while at Sirius, it was said on the air even like, what you know you don't have the protection of a union. Why would you do that and risk getting fired? This would have been like early serious that years. Was a lo- yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. So if that's the case, uh, my, my, my presumption is that they wouldn't just fire him. They'd give him early retirement if he's not 65. I don't know how old he is. Gave him a package and just told him, shut the fuck up. Don't tell, it, don't tell anybody that you were fired before Christmas because it's going to make us look like shit. And if we find out if it leaks somehow, whatever, uh, beforehand, then we're going to know it came from you and we're not giving you anything. Hence, non-disclosure agreement, blah, blah, blah. And after the whole Marcy, uh, sorry, after the whole GoFundMe debacle when it came out, uh, I'm sure that was more on their minds than this. It was more like we can't be seen as assholes to Scott like this twice in such, you know, such in such a short period of time, too. Yeah, Absolutely. So I feel bad for Scott, but also you don't yell at your fucking boss and expect any good to come out of it. So I understand why he might be upset. And uh, I certainly would probably tell Marcy to go fuck herself myself, but that would have been ages ago. Why they wouldn't have fired him a long time ago just for embarrassing Howard over releasing the, um, the GoFundMe information is, is beyond me. But anyway, so there's that. Any thoughts on that? Any? Uh... <sighs> no. <laughs> yeah, and I think good for Scott. More time for him to perfect his uh, seven ten split, and uh, uh, we wish him all the best. Of course, we have no problems yeah. with Scott, but but uh, and he and he's got to be in I some be, ways I a bet lot he'll happier. He'll be a lot happier. There. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There Jeez. you go. Boom. Yeah. Punch buggy. Um, so we're if, if without further ado, I suppose we should go on to the um, the uh, information. So the subjects we've got. First of all, we're going to go straight into March second which was the the only thing of note in that whole day was the Harry Styles interview, which, by the way, according to Mark Spriggan, took two hours, almost oh, two hours. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've got all the clips. And did you, you listen to it the, the first time, the first pass, yeah. Sam? You're a regular listener. So what did you think of it? Uh, okay. First of all, I could not believe how much projection was going on during this interview everything he projected he got wrong too you know what i mean it's just uh, okay on a level let's uh, on an adjusted scale of shit according to the robert plant interview let's base that as the the mecca of shit uh horrible interviewing was it better or worse than that interview it was better yeah but i will tell you where for me it was more it was funnier visually when you go and watch the Howard 360 on YouTube let's say okay. it's Harry Styles wearing a pearl necklace and an old lady blouse which goes not talked about or challenged which I cannot believe n- no one on the Howard Stern show is going to point out what the hell are you wearing but okay fine moving on they're making the whole band sit on these uncomfortable backless stools where Howard is just cavelling over Harry Styles and these five people. I said it reminds me they're all looking at each other during this inter- this really long interview and you can see them slowly getting more hunched over. They're giving each other and shooting each other looks at, e- at one another. Basically like they're at the DMV and when is this torture going to end? <laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. Um, oh, oh, this is so. This is a question. Did they did they have uh, when you you got your subscription? Does that include a a video? Like you can see the whole thing on video as well, like an on demand type yeah. thing. Yeah, you could see the whole thing on video, but okay, a lot of on times you, on my YouTube, apps. It's, yeah. Yeah, on YouTube you could see the clips, but online you could see the whole thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it's horrible. Also. <laughs> There's three women who play the keys and drums and two men who play guitars. After a while of this going on, they just start futzing like children with their instruments because they don't know what to do because he's not talking to them. So imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine. And they're probably already heard these stories a million times because he probably gets asked these questions, not the projecting ones, but the more well-known ones. I can't even imagine sitting there for this long with, and it also in the app, you see the wig. You could see the wig. Was it the same video that we see that he's hidden behind every single mic and every monitor? He's a little bit more visual and close up during this, which is horrifying. And the glasses, <laughs> the glasses and the wig are just bouncing around it's it, it looks like a trampoline spring. It's just terrible. When, H, HD and 4K was the worst thing. It's gonna, when it gets to 8K, I swear to God, that wig is going to look like a coral reef. Um, it, <laughs> it's it's um, it, I, from what I know, One Direction. Well, first of all, One Direction was massively f- huge for in the in the era of downloading and people not really buying records anymore, or maybe not even buying iTunes anymore. Um, or they're just doing like song by song. Nobody's buying records at least. Um, the, they were huge. And when Harry Styles went solo, his sales dropped. I mean, he might've got hits, but they're, I, I suppose a platinum record these days is the equivalent of a couple, three platinum 20 years ago. I have no idea what the metric is anymore. And it's he's had nuts. both, both of his solo albums have sold a million copies. That's pretty good. I would say in, in 2018, 17, 20, you know what I mean? I mean, if you compare them to numbers, like when I was growing up, Britney Spears sold 20 million copies of Oops, I Did It Again. Or what was that? Was that the CD? I think that was her second album. Yeah, that sold 20 million. NSYNC sold somewhere close to that. So every generation has its boy bands, though. And I guess this just happened to be this last generation of boy banding. Yeah, well, yeah, and I i mean, I know the origins. Basically, he started with The X Factor, in, which was a, a show, Simon Cowell produced the show in, in England, and it really is just another AGT, pretty much. Um, although they have them, and he's licensed those types of shows to every country. Italy has one, Greece has one. They all have an American idol, so it's Italian idol or Greek idol or fucking Spanish idol. And he's got the rights to all these shows, and Simon Cowell must be worth a billion dollars at this point. I know. And also because of Harry's connection with Simon Cowell, Wig was just craving for him to talk shit about him and he wouldn't do it. Not not really. He said a couple of things, but it was very fair. It wasn't what Wiggy was looking for. So the first thing we're going to play before we get into that was I, I, I fucking hate Chris Wilding anyway, but he's the one responsible for these Rocky Pendergast crank calls that they that they do. And to listen to, you know, crank yankers like Florentine, the way they used to do it, and even Sal and Richard, who were very derivative of Florentine back in the day, um, to listen to this, them pawn this off as content or that I'm supposed to laugh at is horrific so this is him talking to that kathy and then we're going to talk a little bit about how it was kind of exposed on reddit how these things were made ah 682 welcome hello kathy 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 my dear rocky pendergast here darling <laughs> pip pip cheerio all the rest rocky where are you calling from oh we're having a rip roaring time aboard the world's most luxurious party vessel the ss Ah, now how did you find me, Rocky? I'm always interested in people. Who the fuck is laughing at that? Who the I fuck feel is like, laughing at that? I feel like I'm listening to a TV that was left on in somebody's house next door. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> anybody want? I'm a huge SCTV fan. If anybody wants, look up SCTV Long Distance and the sketches. Uh, Catherine O'Hara is playing this old biddy who's there talking. To I the love cameras. Catherine I, O'Hara. I, I, people are talking like she's the phone's ringing and she's not answering, so the cameras start knocking on the door. Like, and she's going, "I hope my friend will call me. It's been so long." And she's just letting the phone ring and ring and ring. It sounded exactly like that. Finally, the police break in and take her out. John Candy's going, "Get her out of here! Get her out!" <laughs> so the, the, this is as a, a when you go back to the the real good, you know, jerky boys calls and stuff. I don't even know why they persist on adding this filler, except they got nothing else to talk about. So. Uh, so first off, so Harry Styles comes in and he does, uh, the, the, we'll just start the clips one by one. They're all little different lengths. So bear with us folks. You recorded it while on mushrooms or you wrote it while you were on mushrooms. I, I um, like this. I like this approach because to me, you know, that's, that's avant-garde. I mean, that's kind of right. crazy, right? <laughs> so he's talking about whatever you recorded his latest album on mushrooms. I haven't done mushrooms since I was in high school and, um, I, I, it was. I don't know if it's avant garde anymore. Is it? Didn't the what, Beatles do ever? this? <laughs> Didn't the Beatles go on acid trips in the '60s to make Sgt. Pepper's and and get on well psychedelics, a pot and acid, I suppose, to record their albums? So did the Stones. Why is it avant garde in fucking 2019, 20? World's oldest teenager. Absolutely. So cool drugs. I, I was waiting. I was. I was on my bingo card. I had um, what was it? Uh, eight, not um. I had Ludes and um, Angel Dust <laughs> to see if he'd make any <laughs> reference to outdated drugs like Yellow Jackets, you know, Black Beauties. You know what I was going to say, though, is funny. He talks about how LSD gave him OCD and how it's a horrible thing. And now all of a sudden shrooms it. Yeah, that's so avant-garde and cool. I thought that gave you a, a psychological disorder. What are you talking about? I guess you know that, you guess, know that he never he never. Cool. First of all, he would have been a perfect coke head, uh, Howard, with that with that fucking uh, with that nose he had. You could just it's like a Hoover vacuum at a party with an album. Um, what do the know. what do the mushrooms do? Like, do they? I mean, I, well, he goes. What he's asking? What do they do? He said, "I've taken them before. I've well, done like, mushrooms." Okay, you know. Well, I mean, what do they do to you? Well, I did them like I'm old. You know, I'm a geezer, right? So, uh, you know, I did them back in the like maybe the seventies. Sure. And all I did was giggle a lot. Right. And uh, Yeah, kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 it was just kind of a happy overall good feeling. I don't He never did mushrooms. mushrooms. There's no way. Mushrooms <laughs> don't they, they're psychedelic and but but you're not I don't know that people get happy. Ecstasy, yeah, I, sure, fine. No, you can get the giggles for some things because if you hallucinate something and you realize that this isn't real but it's happening to you, it can be funny. I suppose. Either way, what a liar. <laughs> yeah, I don't buy did much. I think the only mushrooms he's eating is fucking Nobu uh, bento box that he gets with them for free. So there's um, this is another one. I, it's called Safety in Numbers Question. When you come from a band mm. like you did, I mean, yeah. you were in a band. There's a, there's a certain <laughs> safety there, right? Because right. when you're with the band, hey, you know, you don't feel you feel protected in a way. Mm -hmm. So when you go solo and you start writing. It's a whole different vibe, right? I absolutely uh, Sam. No, I, 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 no, it's not a different vibe. It's completely the same. Next question. I mean, what? Is, what is... And I'm gonna. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to bring up SCTV once more. But this is exactly what he reminds me of. There was a sketch Eugene Levy did called uh, "Money Talks," uh, and his character's name was Brian Johns. And I'm gonna play it. Basically, he would. Uh, it predates the Chris Farley show by what I don't know, maybe 14 years. And basically, he would just ask stupid questions about how much something costs. So I'm gonna play a little bit for you. That's who Wiggy reminds me of with these in questions. Well, we're here in the Big Apple at, at the fabulous penthouse apartment of uh, Hannah Claire Graham. And, like, are, would you, are you one of the richest women in America? Yes. <laughs> like, how do you start a magazine? Like, do you, do you just use your own money or do you, do you get a publishing place <laughs> to do it? Or, how, like, if I wanted to start one, like, how, how do you do it? <laughs> uh, uh how do i look cool like the scarves and uh and 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 
And and how do you write that song? <laughs> His questions. So it's like the bingo cards absolutely are always, you know, like isn't it the biggest aphrodisiac being in a movie where you're jealous of your siblings? Uh, are you in therapy? And that's in there, by the way. I'm sorry to tel- telegraph my punch, boys and Did girls. Did your dad love you? <laughs> Oh yes, don't worry. And but I found that one uh, interesting because he's he's going on about did you feel safe being in a band? It, it, again, it's more projection because Wiggy is never more comfortable than when he's in his own studio, surrounded by everybody he pays to keep him informed, to keep him fed, to keep him sounding like a human, be- like a man, to keep him sounding heterosexual, sort of, uh, at least vocally. But and to write for him and all these fucking jokes that he comes up with. So I it, thought that it was also. Fun. It also projects how he is terrified of failure. Failure for Wiggy is terrifying. Yeah, but at and the same time... if he time, does he... fail, he'll always spin it. It's well, not yeah, and he's always... And this is, this is my contention. He's never been willing to stand on his own merits and do his own thing. That's why... So if you don't, if you don't ever actually attempt something upon which you could fail, you won't fail. So it's, it reminds me of the, um, in the Robin book when Robin said, um, well, she quotes in her book, who knows if it's true, but she outed Howard for not wanting to leave afternoon radio because they had no competition. He goes, we're number one in the afternoon. She goes, that's because we're the only ones on. And he goes, we're yeah, that's true. number one for our purposes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so he doesn't have ambition. He's not a type A type person. Uh, and so I think, okay, One Direction went from 2010 to 2016 and then he went solo that's about the average five years is pretty six years is a long time for a boy band or a girl band for that oh. matter yeah. and it's yes. it, yeah and it would be normal it would be a, and i looked at the numbers their last album sold as always that the arc is always going down after a certain point their last album together sold something like two and a half million copies and the previous one was like three and a half million so clearly they were arcing down anyway so uh it makes sense to go solo what what point you're going to just let it go to shit or go solo and try something different. So here's the tortured zookeeper question. Check it Are out. Are you tortured in a way because half of the world expects you to make a fun, light, poppy record? Mm. They expect you to do something almost, you know, trite. Right. As long as it, you know, appeals to young girls or something. And then the, the artist in you is like, fuck that. I'm right. a fan of McCartney. I'm a fan of Bowie. I'm a fan of the stone. Check, check off the Bowie and, and uh, McCartney on your bingo cards, everybody. I fucking hate, I don't know about you, Sam, but I hate when he treats every one of these little shits like they're Bob Dylan. Everybody, they're like a 20-something-year-old twinky kid who's ambisexual. That is like, oh, oh. Uh, Be- right, uh, like Bella Thorne. You're so tortured. <laughs> what? Asking Kristen Stewart. <laughs> you know, fall, you know, like, what's your process? Imagine asking, uh, like, I don't know, Hulk Hogan, like, what do you think about when you're in the ring? Uh, y- you know, ask, I don't know, ask a, ask a taxi driver, what's your process when you get behind the wheel? Do you, I mean, there's singer songwriters. Okay, fine. Ask about, ask about a lyric, ask about choice of producer, ask about um, compression settings on, if you want to get technical, like a lot of the music magazines, the Guitar World and Drum Magazine, they're going to say that, that I get, I don't mind it, but. This kind of stuff, Jesus H. I love everything about that era. Mm-hmm. And you want to go in a different direction, but then you got everyone pulling at you and telling you what to do to be commercially successful. Mm. I can I can almost feel that torture. <laughs> you got everybody what? pulling at you. Torture. <laughs> what torture do you No, need I'm those? making million I'm making millions of dollars. Girls are throwing themselves at me at will. And yeah. I get to do half the workload because I have bandmates. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> Right, he's treating him like Trent Reznor or C- Gigi Allen, like he's some kind of indie, you know, underground guy who's killing himself for his art. And this next one is a real short clip. It's it's just about you'll it, you'll hear for yourself, folks. I never know what anyone's singing about, but it makes me want to cry. What do you need? <laughs> what songs make him cry? Do you remember which songs put him in a dark place? <laughs> uh, Sponge. Uh, <laughs> the what, sponge. What's the what's the other one? Co- Chris oh. Cornell. <laughs> oh, there was a Coldplay. Was it a Coldplay song or no? It was about um. God, what was it? He <laughs> said it makes me think about his mother. Ah, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ah, oh, Jesus. Now, when I remember, we'll be off, and it won't matter. But anyway, it made me laugh because 
uh, oh, Shine, Collective Soul. Now, Collective Soul Uh-oh. is its song. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but it was a collective song. I know, I remember this conversation. Heavy, heavy. That was the song, heavy. (laughs) It it makes me feel about my mother. (laughs) So, hold on. This is another, here's another Brian Johns question. That is a great song. That take you a long time to write? Thank you. I don't uh, know why I always ask that. No, that people. was probably the... <laughs> we don't know either. We don't know either. <laughs> no. and, and by the way, yes. during this, the, ba- the bandmates looking at each other during this segment, this whole thing, you could just see on their faces, they're like, what the fuck is this idiot talking about? Sorry for cursing, by the way. I got to work on that. That's all right. We'll both do it. We'll both fucking work on it. Um, so then he starts, at, as you mentioned earlier, Sam, he starts going on a... He's totally fishing in the let's fuck Simon Cowell surreptitiously pool and coming up with tires every time. Because now, Simon, I, you can say what you like. Simon um, pr- provided the platform for these guys who were going to, like, Carrie Styles originally was going to be a solo artist anyway um, and didn't make it past a certain seg- sex- a segment of X Factor when Simon Cowell decided, hey, it's, it's a no brainer. Let's put all these guys together as a boy band. It makes way more sense. And Which is very provided, smart. Yeah, and I think I don't know if he produced the first record, but he gave them their first record contract. He arranged it, so he was instrumental in making sure Harry Styles got to where he was. It wasn't like Harry Styles was, I don't know, um, like, uh, like Leonard Cohen somewhere on the streets playing guitar, and a record agent saw him and said, "You're you're bound for stardom." You know what I mean? It was he was he was he went on a you know a scrub show and. Well, not a scrub show. It was popular in England. Um, AGT was the scrub show in Canada, in the states, but um, he's not going to bash. You mean them. it was it, right? And it wasn't the losers. It actually did something. <laughs> the losers. <laughs> okay, hold on. Fishing for Simon Cowell bashing part one to just get taken over by like when Simon Cowell is mm-hmm. running. I, I I'm not a big Simon Cowell guy, a fan. Sure. Because I wonder. I, I don't even know this. I don't know why <clears throat> I imagine this, but imagine we, when you're working. We do. In that environment, and you're with this band now, One Direction, Mm. they're probably saying to you, listen, you don't know how to write songs. We're going to take over. We'll tell you what to sing. We'll tell you what to do. And we'll Mm. make you a big star. You wanted to say something? Why would he be imagining this? (laughs) I would imagine that's their approach because they think they know better than you. Again, so he's wanting him, again, he's just lining up the targets for him to shoot at, at fucking Simon, but he's not going to because, and he admits it right here. He says he, they didn't know what they were fucking doing. It would made perfect sense. I feel like. And he's, he's lobbing the hockey pucks at Harry Styles. He's not even allowing him any sort of creative ability to insult him, even if he could, because he's just <laughs> slap shotting him with what, here's what I want you to say. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Do this. Yeah. Pow. Yeah. Right. To be fair, they did know better than us, because like when we started, I was sixteen. Right. I'd written maybe two songs before. <laughs> so there you go. Like I was sixteen. Swing, and swing in the mist. Sixteen wig. You were jerking off or watching your friends jerk off in the basement. So shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You were you were finishing uh, grade fourteen and fifteen at that time. Mm, you were like were you insulted, trying to get laid at WellMed. I don't want you to be a solo artist. You, well, were you insulted band. when Simon first said to you, "I don't want you to be a solo artist. You need to be with these other guys." Was no. That, you didn't care. You were okay. With like it. it was all new, and I had no idea. I didn't. I didn't go on the show thinking I was going to win. I didn't. My mum actually entered me in to go. Oh, is she that how it happened? Me up for it. Yeah. Well, if you did your fucking reading and you researched this, you'd know exactly how it happened, shithead. But again, he can't let a chance. If he sees, basically, if he sees a guest and there's a Simon Cowell connection, you know he's going to go straight for the jugular every time and try to get him to say shitty things about him. Remember the comedians in cars with uh, coffee thing with Seinfeld and he tries to go in for some Leno bashing? Right. And uh, Seinfeld goes, uh, that's all right, enough with the character assassinations. And he shut it down. He completely said, right. no, enough of that shit. And Howard shut the fuck up. Right. And what is, I mean, you didn't even do your research. You're projecting is what you were hoping that the story was. And it wasn't. Boom. Bingo. Fell. Yeah. yeah. Do you, don't you also hate Simon Cowell the way I do for firing me from a show that I was tanking the ratings and then improved the ratings once I left? Uh, you know, um, let's see. This is another uh, all about me. It's all about me, Ed, question. For people um, that are really nice to you, I, I had the complete opposite um, uh, life than you. 
Right. Yeah. When I was sick, nobody took care of me. No, <laughs> right. And no one was letting me in their attic. I'm telling yeah. you. I think, was this um, James, was this a story James Corden uh, looked at? No, James Corden's agent or manager looked after him. I think that was it. Uh, let's see if I got this right. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Let's go back. One. Uh, huh. Okay. And who doesn't take care of Wiggy? He is a veal. <laughs> That's the other thing. Is there anybody what is less he talking pampered about? Than... Nobody takes care of me. You can't even make coffee or do laundry. You, the second you have a tickle in your throat, you have thirteen people running up to you, seeing what you need. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no one took care of me. I hate that fucking narrative that he tries to push off. In he's a sixty-something-year-old man. He's well into retirement status now, and he's still going on about my father and this. It's not funny. It stopped being funny. I don't know. Twenty years ago, uh, you know, and when you're, you're making millions of fucking of you. dollars, right? Nobody <laughs> took care of you because you lived in a a neighborhood that was being, you know, urbanized or what? what how do you say that? <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> What's oh, gent- I'm looking gentr- for? Gentrified. Gentrified. Yeah. Okay. You're, you live. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's all right. That's all right. Everybody, anybody that, there you go. You can, you can bash us. We're not, uh, we're not uh, part of the intelligentsia. Um, this, this next clip is called uh, wig channels, Martling hate through Harry. And you tell me if you don't think this sounds like, this is projection about when Jackie left. Like, uh, you tell me. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. What was with that guy? Uh, the, the, I, I, you made a joke on Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. You didn't mention the, the Zane's name. Oh, yeah. He was the first one to leave One Direction. Yes. <laughs> I think, hold on. I don't know if that was his name. Let me see if I got this right. It is Zane Malik. Okay. He, but then he goes into a joke here. Say, you called him Ringo, which I thought was brilliant. He wasn't a drummer. Why is that brilliant? Why is it? He doesn't even know who he is. That's right. <laughs> uh, you didn't. You called him Ringo, which mm. I thought was particularly funny. But w- were you angry when? The- Why was it funny? He was another singer songwriter part of the band. How is that funny? I don't know. I mean, I think but if okay. it's a like Pete, Pete Best, a guy who was kicked out of the Beatles, that kind of makes sense. It's still not. It still doesn't make sense because the guy left. No, the band. because he, he actually fired. had to have success with uh, Zayn yeah. Malik. Had a ton of success with the band. Right. And and way less success, successful when he left. But that's beside the point that Ringo never got fired. And he wasn't and he was a singer songwriter, but he was the fucking drummer. Decides to suddenly leave the band um, because, I mean, you were happy in one direction. You yeah. weren't thinking in that mm-hmm. in that area of leaving the band. Mm-hmm. Was that hold on now? He's he's asking if he would be upset. He would be upset with that guy for leaving when Wiggy's trying to put it in, put him in the position of weren't you that upset? It's torturous. That it's torturous. Yeah, when Sam, yeah, when Simon wanted you, to, didn't want you to be solo. Like, which is it? You know, this he guy's an asshole for wanting saying. to leave. This guy's an asshole for wanting to leave the <laughs> band. But the producer's an asshole for not letting you go solo because I'm trying to fucking Listen, kiss your ass. Harry, I can feel the torture of being in one direction. But Zane, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> that an insult to you? Was that something that he should not have done? Um, I don't. I don't know if I could say something he shouldn't have done because I. I just didn't feel that way. So, right. Um, so it's it's hard for me to like condemn. Oh. It, especially in hindsight, looking at it now, the last thing that I would have wanted is for him to have stayed there if he didn't want to be there. But maybe he could have handled it better. Yeah, I think like it was a shame. It was a shame, and like it was like in a tour. And I think if he'd come to us and maybe kind of discussed it a little more, we might have found a way to kind of do it a little smoother but but ultimately if you know if you don't want to be there then you don't want to be there and i you know I... but you don't do it in the middle of the tour you try to be a little professional and say hey we've sold some tickets here people are expecting to see us and then and then let's sit down and talk about it i think i think what you're saying is even though you're young at that point mm. there is a way to conduct yourself i mean you said it okay i so. he he is fishing for a soundbite so hard in that clip, and he, Harry yeah. Styles is not giving it to him. And by the way, keep in mind, people, there's six people sitting, or I'm sorry, five people sitting around Harry Styles listening to this, mm-hmm. <laughs> drone on, getting asked yeah. nothing. They may right, as well be furniture. <laughs> think of all the people that left. It's not, there's not many, but there are people that left Howard's show and because, well, they got better offers or... 
you know, like the Scott Einziger one is one I really want to take apart one day when he left, the last day he left, and uh, the bullshit that Wiggy gave him that's so telling and so projecting because he was so jealous. He got a gig on a network television show, and he is so petty when people leave. And Jackie left for less success. That wasn't enough. He really wanted to rub his face in. So when he did go back, Jackie, I think, said he was making, I don't know, a thousand a month for four shows or something like that. Not even enough to cover his gas. I don't know. Maybe it was decent. But um, he wanted him back for shit money just to rub it in his face because that was Howard right. saying, yeah, give him, a, give him, give him gas money. That was about it. Uh, that was all about just Schadenfreude. Um, so this is, uh, another one that Tracy Lynn really liked. Oh, and by the way, I should mention Tracy because, um, when, um, when she, uh, there was one clip where, uh, let's see if I got this right. There was one I love thing. Tracy, oh, yeah. By the way. Oh yes. Always a good, always good, uh, you know, introspection with these, uh, clips and she's always good at giving us, um, um, her take on stuff. That's maybe what somebody else is going to miss. Um, he, when he mentions about, she said it was kind of insulting for Wig to say that write, writing a song that was considered trite was what the company would have liked. The basically calling the songs pap. I, I don't think it was being insulting. It was it was um, the the question was stupid as it was, but I don't think it was really insulting to accuse a boy band of writing kind of kiddie songs, and then now he's a solo artist going to write trying to write something of with more depth to it. Uh, I suppose I'm not a fan. Um, I don't think he was being insulting. We're going to have to beg to differ on that. I was amazed, actually. I think this is one of his better interviews in terms of not cutting people off until the end when he couldn't help it, couldn't help himself, and he did it. But And overall, he was very patient with Harry Styles, but you know it was to pad out more fucking time because <laughs> it was two hours long. Him. It was, he was two hours long. jealous of his necklace. Yeah, he was think, really wanted his blouse and his pearls. Right, but this one was a Tracy Lynn point. What she pointed out was actually about a clip about he, uh, Wig was amazed that his guardians at the time, which I think I was correct. I think it's uh, James Corden's manager or management kind of looked, took them in, took him in, and um, that they said no to him when he wanted stuff. And he's amazed that anybody said no to him, as if he's fucking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe so. you were, maybe you were desirous. I mean, I'm getting psychological mm. here, but maybe you were de desirous of now that you could have anything you wanted in the world. In a sense, you had money, you had fame. There was women. There's all kinds of whatever you want. Here mm. were people willing to set up rules and say no to you. And this is it goes into the next one, which is let me go continue that what that bit. Harry, you've then. had so much fame at such a young age. How do you say no to yourself? You seem like a pretty grounded guy sitting and talking to you. And from what I've read of you. Mm. Like, like you can have, you could live like a king. You can have whatever you want. You got money, you got fame, you got looks, you know, you got your youth and you got talent. You could fuck over every woman on the planet. By fuck over, I mean, you know, you could really hurt people. You could have, mm. you could, you know, people are ready to do whatever you want. Now, again, we say projection guys, because there's not, there's no linear way this comes out as a normal question to be asked of anybody. Except if you're a mogul. He's just a singer. He's a singer. A singer songwriter. Listen, okay. I truly think, you know, just how we're talking on the fly. Sometimes we say things because, well, we're trying to carefully choose our words, but once in a while we mix up our words. He carefully mm. chose to say that statement. Those were his mm. choice of words, which is incredibly telling, mm -hmm. I think. And well, yeah, he's saying that if I was in your position, essentially, I would fuck over people. And as we know, he did when already he's had He's basically that, um, asking him, how are you not such a complete king baby asshole throwing baloney at girls tits and asses? Because that's because what I should be doing. Yeah, because you can so, like he think, but he thinks he's like fucking he thinks he's Bob Ezrin or some mega producer that can do whatever he want. But the fact is. When, uh, and I believe we talked about this on the Carson podcast, um, in Stuttering John's book, he outed Howard for getting uh, in the way of already getting the, a gig trying out for the Late Late Show the, to replace Craig Kilborn. And right. uh, he, they, because they were doing tryouts. 
And so he's done this. We know he's fucking fu- he's fucked with people behind the scenes and uh, kept jobs from people. And they, that's <laughs> he what I was. He's basically Alan. saying you could ask all of your staff and roadies to pull out their cocks at any point. Why don't you do that? <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent percent, my dear. But you seem like you're able to say no to yourself. Is was there? Am I right about that? You've got to find some internal mechanism to say. I'm just a regular guy. I can't take whatever I want. Right. Is that what's going on inside of you? I mean, I think <laughs> everything's a yes or no question. What, uh, <laughs> why Why aren't you making uh, your b- drummer teabag your keyboardist? <laughs> Even when it's not an interview, I have a clip that I'll play one day. It just as a sort of a mishmash of little small clips uh, that I've collected over the years. Jay Leno, this was a time when Jay Leno's staff, um, there, I think it was a Conan Jay Leno altercation, basically. Uh, and because they were going to move the show, Jay Leno was going to have to take a pay cut because they said, look, we can't afford to pay you 30 million a year. Uh, the Tonight Show, uh, NBC anyway. And then Leno said, look, just cut my salary in half and give whatever you need to my staff because they're the ones that need the money. And he did. And then Sweet goes on the air that day and says something, why don't you want more money? <laughs> what right. what why kind of asshole? He called him an asshole for helping <laughs> out <know>. the staff. <laughs> so here's another one. Like that about me. So is it dangerous when you date a woman? You're talking about Valentine's mm-hmm. Day. I almost get why you didn't have a Valentine. Is it dangerous when you see vagina up close? Right. When you when there's somebody you like and you genuinely want to approach them, mm. it, it and do this go through your mind, oh shit. You can almost fast forward and say, if this doesn't work out, then I'm the asshole. It's going to come out in the paper that I was somehow disrespectful right. or I didn't, uh, you know. How do you get to know somebody? Okay, go ahead. It's almost finished, but go ahead. Projection. And also, too, it's not about hurting the person. He's making it, somebody might find out you hurt a person and report on it. Right. I'm That's gonna look what like he's the talking asshole. about. How do I how would you look? I mean me, how would I look if you uh, Harry, you uh dump this person and yeah. In a romantic setting <clears throat> and 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 somehow work your way through that. And what if it doesn't work out and how do you come out of that a good guy? <laughs> it's like he's asking Harry Styles to do twenty chess moves like to think about twenty things ahead of how a natural do you have a relationship. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you <laughs> I don't understand. But in a way How do you date? <laughs> like yeah. but in a way you're also Superman. Like you're taking someone into your world mm. and you're impressing the crap out of them. But on the other hand, if you said to a woman, you know what, let's just have dinner in my apartment, mm. you might come off like a creep. But what you're saying is I don't want to go public with this relationship right. yet because I want to get to know you a little bit. It's yeah. a lot to maneuver through. Jesus Christ. Is there anything Hello. not calculated in his life? The, he, go ahead. He's, he's, ta- he's giving us his thoughts on when he was getting out of his marriage and starting to date. Just so everyone oh, knows, he, this has nothing oh, to do about Harry Styles. <laughs> no, nothing. And that's why his, he, and I wish I, I wish I could have seen the video because the, the, the band members must have been looking like, what the fuck is going on here? This is like oh, some demented, yeah. demented HBO point, psychiatry series. They just started playing with the tops of their guitars and just turning those things aimlessly. I mean, it looked like a bunch of kids at preschool who can't sit during circle time. It was just. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody wants to hear, I don't know I felt that I have so to... bad for them. <laughs> oh, God. It's it's unbelievable. The there's an yeah, I have an again. It's another old clip that I'll maybe put into a show that we do where. He goes back on what he talks about with Stuttering John and the Lila Arcieri thing back in the day, where mm-hmm. he uh, he he said um, he goes. He was uh, the creep. They start talking he about. The they creep. start talking. No, but they start talking about his dating, and he he goes uh, he goes. Uh, at one point, he just blurts out, "Oh, all my dates were at home. All my dates were at mm-hmm. home. I never left the house." And that is absolutely true. He had a system set up that they were going to go to his fucking layer of layer of death. And uh, the blackout curtains and, you know, all the gay paraphernalia are going to be in there. I, I it's amazing. Make this, make this home look like a straight bachelor pad. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. So here's there's more projection, retarded projection about being impossible to have a relationship due to the power imbalance. This one was a great um, point, thing that that um, 
that I caught anyway, but Tracy Lynn pointed out, and it was totally about um, him and Beth. Can you ever imagine a world where you are married and devoted to one person, or does that sound insane to you? Because it would almost be an impossibility to form that kind of bond with someone, given your position. He's saying because I'm rich, there can't be a, a power ba- there can't be a power balance between me and my wife. And he's also saying because you're rich and you have options, everybody rich and poor has options. You make the choice to be honorable and love the person you're with or you don't. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, it, this Again, it says more about him than it does about anybody in the studio that he's interviewing. So this was the uh, next clip is called Retarded Non Sequitur about a live David Bowie album. <laughs> that no goes nowhere fast. I love when he throws I, stuff. He, he name drops Bowie. This is the second Bowie mention. It's, I think there's two or like three or four during the interview. I was just going to say, every time there's a musical anybody, especially a young musical anybody, David Bowie, without a doubt, will always come up. You will win bingo every time. Oh, yeah. Everyone will win bingo. You'll all only get a dollar in a bingo hall because everyone will have that. (laughs) Bowie's Bowie's the Paul Lind of his Hollywood squares. (laughs) He's always going to get center center square for the win. Um, Uh, But the the thing is, the thing is, um, he and he treated Bowie so shitty when he did die that it makes all this Bowie stuff so nauseating. Not that I'm a huge Bowie fan, but anyway. How long does the third of June? Where do you play in Philadelphia? By the way, uh, hold on. To yeah, stop this yeah. For a second. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen to how tired he sounds. He sounds like he's been questioned in a terrorist act, <laughs> and he's been <laughs> under questioning for for hours in a room in Homeland Security. <laughs> I've got this image <laughs> when you mentioned the DMV. I'm just thinking about the test that you get when you're renewing uh, your license, and they oh. got that. They got, they got they got your um. Their eyes are in the thing. And you're supposed to hear the sound, and you're supposed to go like this. Where you, where do you, or so? No, not that's a that's a hearing test. But when you're supposed to see the first um, peripheral vision, they're testing your peripheral vision. That's what yeah. I got the image of the rest of the band in there, kind of going like, <laughs> "Let's see, what can I notice in here to just keep myself from dying of of complete boredom?" Um, I would have loved if somebody would have fell asleep and fell off their stool. <laughs> So he's asking about this, where'd you do this live album? And they can't remember the name of where this Bowie album was supposedly recorded. So he starts going, the spec, uh, the four, uh, did he, are you playing at the tower or this, the, the spec? Cause Bowie he's thinking about the Philly album, Spectrum live album from Philadelphia. Oh, okay. you, you know that live album I'm talking about? No. It was a double album. It was my favorite album. Oh, okay. He hated the album. He okay. thinks it was a piece of shit and he never liked the recording of it. It was my favorite david bowie album it makes sense because every fucking critic hated that fucking album but wiggy liked it supposedly yeah just like prince's yeah. batman song was the he best bat dance he loves oh, bat dance the, yeah the best prince song bat dance not 17 balloons uh and so this one made me laugh hysterically because there's a song adore you do you know this song it's um, a harry styles I... Yeah, I don't know it, but I I actually liked his voice. I did not find anything wrong with his voice. I and I also, of course, he made him do the cover of Sledgehammer, but I didn't mind this song at all. Well, it's a good song. That's the thing. And actually, yeah, it was it was done really well. I I have to say, but um, this <laughs> there's something about the video. It was something about a fish in the video that made Howard sad. <laughs> So mm-hmm. here it is. Yeah. This is what we're going to do today, mm-hmm. which is, um, let me see. What are you doing? You're doing Adore You. Adore You, yeah. I watched the video of that. That oh, was, yeah. That is like an opus. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. You want to say? Isn't it interesting that Howard rarely gets sad for anything but songs and <laughs> music videos? I mean, he, he had to go to, about, he had to, go to the therapy he, to learn how to cry. He talks about the death of his dog, like Beth was sad and poor Beth and I couldn't, or Ronnie's dog or any, anything human, he's not sad for, but. Songs. Songs. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's yeah, a it full fun. movie, isn't it? Yeah. And it's the fish. <laughs> Your fans put a lot of thought into what's going on there. With the fish? Well, the fish made me sad because the fish is dying and you save them. Mm-hmm. But I get I get very affected by animals being in trouble. This is the guy Didn't he have a whole fish made? 
<laughs> didn't he run out of his house when there was an alarm and left the fucking cats in bed behind in his dust? Oh, yeah. Every single one. And didn't he have a whole fish tank die in his basement? <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I remember that vaguely. Yeah, yeah, a tropical also just, fish tank. I was gonna get Bianca. I just had to remove my boots. A fucking bulldog anchor at the bottom of a pool. It's like a cinder block. Yeah, I'm big into animal rescue and all that kind of stuff. And um, oh. uh, and and this video not only is you acting and really going through it. I mean, it must be how long is the whole video? It's like 15 minutes or something. Uh, I think it's like eight. Eight minutes. Yeah, is <laughs> it's that like 15 eight? minutes. It's eight. It's like it's like look look at that jacket that it's it's red right no it's blue, you know it's it's one hundred percent. He's acting like it, he made Thriller or something. <laughs> <laughs> the world premiere. Okay, so this one is he he he, he talks about adore you now and then. He, but he ends up fucking up the, the 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 meaning behind it, which he probably could have read in an interview with Harry if he really wanted to know that much about it. <laughs> yeah. And you've dated um, famous women and you've dated non-famous, you know, women who have regular kinds of careers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet every relationship has has the, the initial stage is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's real love. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, right? Oh, what? Of course, oh, everybody knows the honeymoon totally. phase. That's why it's called that. I can't. <laughs> it's awful. Everybody's like, oh. "You like fried chicken, right? <laughs> right, right." Um, you wrote cashmere, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh... Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that was the end of it. I got to get back to that. Boom. Over. Mm. So, adore you means I adore you. Mm. <laughs> But I can't be with you. Uh, there he's just <laughs> trying. Uh, uh... <laughs> he doesn't know he's completely befuddled. So, love you means you love them, right? <laughs> uh, Jesus. You so... want a side of pasta means you want pasta? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, bring him potato salad what are you talking about <laughs> the only time that's funny is when grout when when gilbert does grout show back then uh, anal sex <laughs> was known as anal sex <laughs> so this is the obligatory therapy question hold on yeah I yep. therapy. You're in therapy? Yeah. how many times a week you go i don't go often enough because my therapist is in la Okay, so this is, I think, in between the well, they've done the sledgehammer, the Peter Gabriel song, and they're going to ask Lather all about it. But um, then at one point he asks about um, why music videos can't be more innovative. Sledgehammer. One sec. That's it. Why? Why do you love that song so much? Why? Let's. Why do you love that song so much? Let's see if it's for the same reasons I do, but I don't really. Go ahead. So therapy. When he goes, oh. Do that's his dick measuring contest therapy. Oh, yeah. He's always like, oh, yeah. So you do therapy? Well, how many days? What? Well, who? What's their credentials? Where? I mean, that's <laughs> seriously. It's the how big is your cock is how qualified your therapist is. It's his dick measuring contest. I right. can't. He, he's a badge bunny, but he's also a shrink bunny. Like if right. you're in therapy, you're his new bestie. And uh, when he finds out that you go there, like you're heavily therapized. Boom. Can I can I know you? Can I touch you? But you it's know. also it's never enough therapy. So if you go to therapy and you feel good about your mental health and what's going on in your therapy routine, he'll shit all over it because it's not yeah, his it's therapy. Wrong. Exactly. It's wrong. You're, not just, you're not you're not getting you're actually getting better. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I love it because I well, I think it's like the best mixed song ever. It just sounds incredible. You mean the record itself? The record itself. <laughs> They're talking, why do you like Sledgehammer? Because it's the best <laughs> it's the sounding song ever. You mean the song? Yes, Howard, the thing you just asked me about, fuckhead. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I love it so much. The vi the music video is one of my favorite videos full time. Peter Gabriel, when he went on MTV, I remember mm. when that video came out. Yeah. It was me pretty too. fucking nutty. Because it was, it was completely innovative. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know? Um, it, 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 it actually wasn't for anybody who's watching. That's anybody who's listening. Who's a, 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 you know, real music aficionado. Not that I am, but I 
I, I listen to a, a hell of a lot of shit. And there was a Zappa video from, God, I don't know, mid-70s or early 70s where he's doing I'm the Slime and there's a video of him, like this stop motion, you know, plasticine character playing all kinds of fingers on the fretboard, whatever. And uh, that was 10 years ahead of Peter Gabriel. before, And then Splitting Image, you remember that show? It was before your time, but... Um, I remember pop, I watched pop up video and I used to watch Sledgehammer would always come on on VH1 at midnight. There was a countdown and mm -hmm. I would always I, I sometimes I was just a late night person. So I would go down to my living room and watch music videos, the countdown. And that music video was always on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think um, if I'm not mistaken, Phil Collins did a similar one with the the split. He did a splitting image. um uh, video as well. I don't remember mid eighties. It's like that stop not, motion. Right. What's that? Not go to ahead. go off topic too much, but mm -hmm. I, I never thought I'd see a day when I was growing up where music videos wouldn't be a part of popular culture and a thing. I mean, I watched music videos the way these kids watch, you know, YouTube tutorials or unboxing videos or mm -hmm. how to play video games or the, the way they watch other people play video games. I couldn't have never, I would have never predicted yeah. that it wouldn't be a thing anymore. I loved music videos. Yeah, me too. For a time, yeah. Until you get well, you get to a certain age, just music in general starts going by the wayside. But videos, yeah. I mean, the premiere videos were huge. Remember the bad video when it came out? There was all this fanfare. The black or white video, all the Michael Jackson stuff got huge hype anyway. But then there weren't that many videos. So when a new Van Halen video came out, boom, you got to go for that. And if a new Aussie video came out, fuck it. No, we got to watch that. Like the video for no more tears. That was huge. Cause it was a comeback. You know, he was, um, he just dried out. And then this was a sort of, he's back. It's three years since the last album. So Ozzy was like big again and Soundgarden when grunge started hitting and smells like teen spirit and all these fucking videos. It, I mean, you're right. There was an era Unplugged. when this stuff really meant something. Unplugged became a whole thing. Absolutely. Which of course in, uh, Howard invented, right? Um, because people never played acoustic anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, I mean, it was just odd. Even his yeah. like eyebrow was twitching and right. it was, it was just great. Yeah. Where is, well, you know, that, 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 that like videos <laughs> today are so expensive to produce. Mm hmm. But it seems like back then they could just come out with a novel idea and do something simple, you know? Right. Yeah. So, you <laughs> way to go oh, off topic. Meh, meh. Seems like they could, uh, seems like I could just ask a question, but I'm not really asking and I'm making a statement, but I'm using an inflection at the end and you can say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you remember when you were in the Beatles? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, band filler. This is just him padding out shit, talking to the band. He probably, I think on some of it, he felt bad that the band were sitting there and no one was talking to them. So he starts asking them some questions. Yeah, I know. Part, I remember part, this. Huh? Yeah, it's very, very cool. Very energetic. Yeah, this. what is that beat? Do that beat. Just do it to isolate it if you don't. <laughs> Jesus, hold up there, buddy Rich. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did it, did it, did it. What is the beat? Like, what is that beat? I mean, very nice. <laughs> so, what? It sounds like, like there's Run a DMC, walk this way. Like, what are you there's doing? There's a seven year old I, doing cares? that on YouTube somewhere. There's a fucking five year old doing that. And what about Fred? What, could, Fred could play points? that right now on a sound clip. <laughs> Robin could play that, and she doesn't really. <laughs> so that's all programmed into your thing. What are those? What are those wires on your guitar? What do they do? What? Are, uh, what's that thing coming out of your guitar? What is that? That black thing? Any oh, idiot going, who's worked a keyboard knows you press that one button that makes the keyboard sound like that, and you just start playing the piano. That's the way it is. <laughs> right, but uh, Sam, like, he, he's, he's Push, finally discovered button. samplers. <laughs> do a little more of that, please. I'm begging you. I, lo I love to see how you guys break <laughs> that. Would have brought homes, but that would have been. <laughs> How good does that sound? Seriously? This yeah. is the equivalent. If I was in there in a room with a piano and he goes, oh, play me something. I started playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. That's how impressive this is. He just yeah. pressed a That's button Chopin. and started playing one yeah. right hand measure. That's it. It's, to it's total Chris Farley. This, you're just waiting for him to go, awesome. <laughs> Jesus, that is just awesome. And then what are you playing on the keyboards? Uh, 
Start with a flute. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, that was interesting. That's a great part of the song. <laughs> there's, there's nothing more exciting than breaking down each individual part of a song. Go, listen to that bass. Listen to that. What bass. is that? A flute? Is that a flute? I see. <laughs> I think I, yeah, that's good I, radio. I think I hear marimbas. So okay. You know what I would love if if we would have just switched and he, he would he would have been like, you stick that flute up your pussy. <laughs> 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 it used to be the old one. The old show might have said that. Um, let's see if I got this right. I you're have not to gonna sure. you're not gonna be able to play the song and get and get a plug unless you shove that flute up your pussy. <laughs> now by by the way, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the interview, it must be an hour into it. So he's gonna play two songs, which okay, each song is five, six minutes, I don't know, and it eats up a good chunk of the, the interview. But um in the meantime, <laughs> In the meantime, he starts projecting about how how Harry must be a, an asshole to the band members. So he starts talking to him like, you know, when he screams and, at you. And at this point, everybody looks like Quasimodo. <laughs> when you play Sledgehammer, let's say, you know, Harry's going to probably yell at you if you screw up during this song. But you practice it over. Yelling. Yes, he's yeah. yelling. I see. He's the kind of guy that yells a lot. Do, 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 do you practice it over and over again before this performance? <laughs> <laughs> do you practice it over and over again? <laughs> Imagine asking a cook. Do you, do you ever have you ever seen pasta before? <laughs> it's so stupid. Did you what practice these... this over and over again? What are they five learning their instruments for the first time? What are you talking about? <laughs> like the kindy school of rock in there um and he's like honestly he's confounded by salt shaker i i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand why they didn't just get up and do a, a robert plant and just fucking leave at one point so and as i said i have to give him credit for some part of it because he usually is so depends on the guest if it's a twinkish person like harry styles he can only hold it in so much uh, that he'll actually start cutting people off regularly. So this is two examples of him finally, after an hour and something, he's getting fed up, but he wants to keep them longer. So he's conflicted and he starts cutting Harry off. So here's two examples. And then coming in to record, like we kind of, we kind of, I do a lot of writing with Mitch and. How'd you put this band like together, by the way? The studio. <laughs> like, how'd you meet Mitch? <laughs> okay, that's one example. That's the second one. And Ryan was like, I can get Mitch to come in. So Mitch came in and, uh, He's Does Mitch playing. have to audition for you in a sense? Does he? No. <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> Does he have to Does audition? He, have to... he sounds like he took five Kalatapin at, at this point. <laughs> uh, Mitch can Mr. come in. No, he came in. Oh, you didn't Mitch to come in. <laughs> well, to be to be fair, Harry does sound like well, he sounds beaten first of all, but it's it's he doesn't have a voice. He's not. He, he might be a great singer, but he's not a great interview because he, I, I, he, who wants to be interviewed for two hours about the most it's, minute bullshit? It's also. I'm thinking about this in terms of also, like I said, the band being up behind them. Imagine him interviewing you or I, and you have five of your best friends behind you, and they're meant to sit there while you're answering these leading questions with no end in sight. You would be well, so bored with this. <laughs> well, that didn't. That also didn't make any sense for me. To me, why wouldn't they just have the band in the in the if they have a green room there? Maybe they, maybe they were painting it again. Maybe the green they needed a new shade of green. But why wouldn't they just leave the band out until normally the the guests just if it's an interview they sit on the couch and then they join the band that comes in somehow or they or why not it interact the with the leaves. band. Yeah, they might be that. interesting people. Talk about life on the road. Talk about certain sets that you fucked up. Talk about being drunk when you were out one night. Talk about uh, groupies. Talk about whatever the hell you want. Talk about anything. They're, they're right there. They're bodies that can be talked to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> I'm just like Krillo. You're confounded and dumbfounded. Dumbfounded, dumbfounded. Uh, so this is, I think Harry finally says, believe it or not, Harry says we've said it all. <laughs> On tour and he's got needs a place to go. Anything anybody want to say? Anybody uh, want to propose marriage to anybody else all. right now? Anything no? going on? We've said it all. What are we going to do now?
so Harry wants to get the fuck out of there. Clearly, they weren't expecting to be in there that Ugh. fucking long, and he can't take the hint. So then you get right off the bat that he's going to push another fucking Simon button. Simon Cowell says he was pissed mm. when you went off to do your solo career mm. and you didn't consult him. Right. Why didn't you consult him? Right. Yeah. Okay, why didn't you consult him? Because I didn't need to, because I had made all kinds of money and I wanted to do my own fucking thing. Why do you want to know why I didn't consult him? Would anybody be interested in this except for but you? O- but not only that, why didn't you consult him? Again, projection. Why didn't John get in touch with me when he wanted to go to this night show? Well, he did. He tried to get fuck in touch with you and you, you wouldn't answer your goddamn phone. What are you talking about? Right. So again, and then the next, <laughs> the next part, Harry wants to get the fuck out after two hours. <laughs> Um, anyone you want me to bad math? Uh, Simon. Uh, uh, I don't like this. This has guy. been great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you like the guy, right? I mean, he, you're okay with yeah, well, Oh, before. my right. God. Uh, he, um, yeah, he, hmm. I'm very grateful. Ha- him, so. ha- Harry at this point is a, hold on, hold on. Is a, sorry. Harry at this point is a party pinata at a five year old's birthday. He's just beaten down and the candy spilling out. <laughs> shit everywhere and he's like just let this go please i'm the kid I, the kit cat entrails are all over the room <laughs> well again he, he he there's there's certain people that you might even the the your favorite interviews i don't think they last an hour like 40 minutes something like that your favorite interviews with your favorite stars or whatever you don't want to necessarily hear them this fucking long even on npr it's just a drone and but um before- he used to give Robin ability to speak, Artie yes. ability to speak. Absolutely. Why does it just have to be stupid wig giving all the questions? It's also, if you notice in the last, I don't know, three, four years, the only time you'll hear Robin is after an hour or longer. You never hear her in 15 minutes in or whatever, unless she's addressed by the, the guest. And if she's in studio, obviously that day, but, um, it, it, the, the guests, if, unless they address Robin, they're not going to hear from her until after he has set time. Do you think he has somewhere in there behind the, he has some edict like Robin, don't come in until after I give a signal. Oh yeah. Or, until, or, or is it just given like, and Fred, you certainly don't fucking say anything because you don't even hear I, Fred. So sometimes when Fred he calls for him and he doesn't come back. I'd like to think that he fell asleep during the interview and he's just lying and saying he went to the bathroom and somebody has to shake him. (laughs) Absolutely. So here you finally hear Robin. And I mean, I don't like speak to him very often. I haven't seen him. Now we're talking. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I thought we were finished like 10 minutes ago. We are. This is not on the air. right? You can say whatever you want. Now we get into the good stuff. people right. Poor fucking guy. I feel so bad for Harry. Um, oh, the next just, clip. Just baiting for a sound clip every. Yeah. Horribly, yeah. too. Can you also hate Simon? So I'm not alone on this. I mean, mind you, I'm sure there's loads of people that fucking hate Simon Cowell. I'm not I'm not a fan or anything, but Jesus Christ. Can you be more transparent? Uh, this other one was a great clip. It's um, it's a throwaway. And if you blink, if you if you blink or if you cough, you'll not hear it. But check this out. I'll say, where are we? Every, you know what? You're an entertainer, too. you yeah. got to be yourself. Yeah. Always the most interesting. Thank you. Look at me. I'm a big mess. <laughs> be says yourself. Big, I'm being myself. And my, you know what? Like it's it. a big problem. <laughs> i got to be someone else. Tracy Lynn pointed this out again. i got to be someone else. That's, that's, that's the truth. Like, he, he was doesn't, being jealous. There's people who are weird or, let's say, abnormal, offbeat, obnoxious but in their offbeat weirdness whatever they are themselves Mm -hmm. howard is not himself he doesn't know if he should be weird offbeat sexual funny no stupid smart introspective he doesn't know or have any ability to want to be any he doesn't know how to be himself yeah there is no himself Right. This well, is he can't himself read a, searching he for an read. identity. Yeah. He can't read <laughs> he can't a room. <laughs> he can't read, period. He can't read a room. He can't um, feel a temperature. He can't, he can't feel that when someone is, first of all, wanting to get the fuck out of there. And second of all, he can't 
socially. It reminds me of that clip we we played it before. Where I think I think we did. Um, he's uh, trying to tell a story to Don Rickles and he fucks it up. And Don Rickles corrects him, and he's like, "I'm trying to compete with people." And he he acknowledged it on the show. I'm trying to be funny, but I I, I want to be funny, but I can't. Yeah. You know? Like, he, yeah. don't interject yourself. He's he's uncomfortable not being the center of attention. At the same but time, he he's doesn't know how to hold the spotlight. He doesn't know how that, to hold the spotlight either. And that's why he's jealous of stand-up comics because they do don't they don't have that fear. They're behind a mic, but they're not behind twenty monitors and speakers and a huge mic and a wig and teeth. Anyway, so this next bit is um, about uh, <laughs> Luddite Wiggy confounded by well, confounded by uh, phone technology. Nine, nine or ten. You write music every single day? No. When you were in one, you write something every single day. You lyrics do? or something. What do you mean you write every day? Like, like a poem? Po like lyrics, poem, something, some sort of idea. You keep a journal? Uh, yeah, but I kind of, I go back and forth with God, with doing it and just doing it in my phone. Oh, you do it in your phone? A lot of the time, yeah. You type something in and uh -huh. you have like an app to save the notes? <laughs> yeah. So you have... <laughs> and the Get last... It. You Go ahead. In your phone, you type in your phone. No, you have your magic, <laughs> your magic <laughs> wand at hand to make sure that that note gets in there. What is he kidding? That's when you need a, a Rickles in there. Go. No, I use chopsticks. Um, so here, the last one. This is proje projecting about Harry with the diva with another. Oh, sorry, that one I've already done. I think that's the end of the Harry Styles uh, thing. Right, is, is, let's oh, have a God. round. Let's have a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Let's clap for ourselves. Oh, uh, bring us all back. So this next bit um, is um, on the third of March, which. Um, was uh, another bringing up of Sal's bullshit smokescreen about BTS being in serious and he's a racist. In case you didn't get it last week, folks, let's bring in uh, Sal to talk about um, being a racist and uh, Ronnie's Ching Chong Charlie again, because I want to make sure people know I didn't say this, but they did. Yeah, just be smart about it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Zero, I have zero fear. Now, the retarded flu, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, why, by the way, why is he laughing? Why is he ex why is he uh, not laughing? But why is he all of a sudden it's Gary the Conqueror, but he's still saying retarded. He can't get his right. own bullshit. Right? And, oh, and the other thing was they made an apology. This was the thing. They made another fake apology where Sal was going to uh, apologize for his comments. But the person was not human resources, whatever. They did this already with the um, Miss um, Miss Howard TV. Miss Howard Stern. And now, would now even, would now, now that the coronavirus is here in the United States in a total pandemic and it's just yeah. growing, would this be considered racist now? Or was Sal just practicing social distancing and worried about people from other countries not knowing if they contracted it? That's pretty much what they're telling us to do, right? Make yeah. sure that we're keeping our distance. And I get, I get we're obviously it could be considered racist, of course, but I'm saying that, you know, obviously this is a bigger deal than he thought. Absolutely. A shoo shoo retarded flu. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Siri has put up signs reminding people to wash their hands. Who was I it? said these are Sal signs because they give you instructions as well. Remember I told you Sal was in big trouble because he Prelevant. was on the air here with me with Ronnie. Ronnie was saying he won't eat at Chinese restaurants. And, Charlie. and Sal said he was nervous about, you know, BTS being in the building, all Asian people, anything. It doesn't you know. matter if they were Korean or not. Anyway, so Sal, these drops, by the way, when they play them, does it does it seem so fucking jammed in there and just it seems low fi like low quality? They used to the drops used to sound so good. And now they sound seamless. Like they're, yeah, they used yeah. to be seamless. They're jarring. They sound, There's a disconnect. Yeah, invasive and jarring. Yeah, I, maybe maybe it's just me. Well, yesterday, you know, a whole bunch of it was. I was actually shocked that a whole bunch of newspaper articles came out. Yeah, about Sal and Ronnie being racist. I was shocked as well. That anyone cared. I mean, it's like you know, <laughs> that was just like shocking in itself that somebody would waste time writing articles about them. And it's not shocking. You you do you want it for it to happen and probably. 
put paid money for some of them to come out there just to cover your ass. Go ahead. I agree. I, I was just going to say, I don't think that they're shocked at all. I think that no. the show has gotten such little attention and nobody cares about it on any sort of national level anymore that That's right. this any opportunity to mention press mm -hmm. is now happily accepted. And the, the thing is also that um, when... You do see articles, because if you just type in Google, Howard Stern, news, and then set the date according to newest to oldest, you start seeing these websites that are either, they just don't, they're not, they don't seem like legit news sites, first of all. They're not Reuters. They're, you know, the Lighthouse Daily or the fucking, I don't know. They just seem like fly-by-night websites to get something out there. I think a lot of them are fronts. The Buckwald puts out. They just have literally someone typing in, this is the story, when they need something out there in the press. But when it doesn't take, if another site doesn't take that story, cut and paste and report as well, um, then it's not really a story. It's something they put out there di directly to combat something or get some imp interest, drum up interest about something. Or in this case, hide something. I think they're right. They're doing a follow-up article on Benji they, about that he's overweight. <laughs> Brilliant. Wow. But was, Sal, I saw him at the elevator uh, the day after that conversation, and he had this weird look in his face, and I said, "What's wrong with you?" Oh, Variety's calling me a racist. Mm. Hey, Sal, like, come on oh. in here. This doesn't, like how organic does this own, sound? Right? Doesn't his own show? Ha, haven't they been calling him a racist since he's been on it? Who cares? Uh, yes. Yeah. And at this point, it's it's. Hi, the yeah, N-word game. Howard, you participated, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I just put up a clip on my channel about Marty as uh, uh, Marty. Marty, Marty is um, uh, Mike Tyson. And at one point, uh, they just start dropping the N-word like crazy because it's, it's said in the interview uh, that Mike's talking uh, to this reporter. And uh, Artie does a wicked. That was one of the first clips I ever heard of Artie on the show. And it made me laugh hysterically when he started doing his Mike, Mike Tyson impression. Um, Artie's fantastic at getting the speech cadence of yeah. somebody else and that is so huge you can have the accent and throw your voice all you want but if you don't get the cadence of somebody's speech it just yeah. lacks that extra something oh he was so good when he would do jesse ventura or when he would do um when he made fun of lisa lampanelli made me laugh too all right yeah he was he was actually brilliant alec at that. baldwin not, not... Spot <laughs> yeah, Baldwin. On. that was that was one of the Spot best on. yeah he's definitely yeah he's not a he's not really um and in person, he's not like Fred Travelina or he's not Rich Little. He doesn't necessarily get the voice. He's got the the the, the cadence, the inflections. He's got the the tone. He gets the tone right. And, and the tone makes him memorize it, which is actually more brilliant, I think, than just memorizing I, the words themselves, which he does that's too. Right. That's right. And he's not gonna he's not gonna fuck it up the way Wig would. So Sal was all upset. I'm a racist. Let me get him in here. Sal was correct when that. Uh, Human resources person asked him what would people say about him if they uh, were talking about him around the office. He I'm said they'd idiot. say I was a racist. Welcome to 2007, 2006, folks, in case you didn't hear this the first time 13 years ago when he did the uh, black women, white women don't generally. I love that bit. Even if that was made up, I thought that was way funnier. And I don't think that was made up at all, actually. The apology no. thing was might have been, but the original, original white wrap-up show comments, that was not set up. Right. Yeah. Hey, Sal. Hey. How, weren't you shocked there were so many articles about you being a racist? It's ridiculous. I mean, my God, slow news day, apparently. I heard a reporter called asking you to issue an apology. Yeah. Uh, how did you do with that? He was very, very nice. And he said uh, he would issue, um, put a statement out. He said he wasn't pleased with the way the piece went. And by the way, that guy. Yeah. He's one of our guys. We were fucking with you. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> the, how rehearsed does this fucking sound? I mean, not very well, clearly, but by uh, the way, that yeah. was one of our guys. Yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> great. It, it sounds like, like a, a bad table read. It sounds like a shitty ESL book, like an ESL conversation. Hi, Danny. Where have you been today? Oh, I've just been at the mall. Right. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to get no one's going to pick these guys for Oscar season. <laughs> you just can't win, can you? <laughs> we have so much fun 
Uh, Sal was a nervous wreck my because my hands are shaking. Right? I know because we're all- my hands are shaking. Yeah, she's mine too. Out of fucking boredom. So at some point during that same show, there's a, a some talk about Coffee House because we know he's a huge Coffee House fan on Sirius. That's and that's the the folk artist, right? Like it's all acoustic guitar and song singer songwriters. Yeah, I when I flip through Sirius in my car and I'm you know scrolling through on the dial. Mm-hmm. sometimes I catch coffee house just to see because I'm curious because he likes it so much. I've never, I don't like it once in a while. There'll be a song that's done acoustically. I'm like, Oh, I want to just see how this sounds. But for the most part, it's put you to sleep music. I can't, I can't drive yeah. with it. But that's so just my it's, case. In this case, it's a little projection about Beth and there's going to play another clip that has nothing to do with any of this uh, as, as ter- in terms of, quantum he it's not from it's from years and years ago about what he wants in a partner and so he starts talking about this broad savannah outen um uh, who's singing a song and, and anyway he starts like if i was dating I her do, I, she's a perfect person to so date you're right because she really wants to be yeah what's that you're, you're right what? about the sound clips sounding very very abrasive and not in line with the show i don't know the what's happening is- the mix is wrong, the levels are wrong, and well, the clips are wrong, and <laughs> I think the employee is wrong. Um, Fred... It just, sounds like a geez, mistake. <laughs> he's been making more of them. That Wasn't it the last show we did? It was the breakdown, the last breakdown where he actually... I don't know if we played it. I thought we did, where he played into a song or into a break, and Robin was saying something, and then Howard goes, no, stop, stop, stop. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Robin's talking. That would never happen back in the day. That would just never happen. Fred was on top of it. Now he's just clearly fucking passed out in a stupor in the corner, like an opium stupor. He might, be, he might be on drugs. Although if you're on that show, I, why wouldn't you be? Why couldn't you be? How can't you be? Yeah. Darn, she's hot and, all, and she was on Disney and it seems like everything should be going her way. But she still hasn't broken through. And I like those kind of women. You're a mess. Yeah, I like that. I don't want a really successful woman. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny he says that? Because listen to this old clip, everybody. Uh, I'm going to uh, go. Yeah, go ahead. She should have it all together because she's hot. What does being hot and having it all together have anything to do with one another? Yeah, in this in this like downloadable like uh, streaming sh- like n- age that we live in, it's harder than ever for a fucking musician to get money outside of touring. So who's going to be a successful singer songwriter unless they have a massive push and are touring constantly and have something unique? So this is the this is one of the old clips that we used to play. I know when I got divorced, my goal uh-huh. was to meet a famous chick <laughs> who had a lot of money. Oh, yeah. I, that was my, and I, when, when I, when I thought about, yeah, <laughs> when I thought about my goals, like what I'm looking for in a woman I, who was very wealthy and famous and young. <laughs> okay. Now, that, that was a little more in line with the truth. They're both true, but he wanted it both ways. He wanted someone rich so that he doesn't have to give money because he cares about marbles more than anything else. But this newer trip, this newer clip where he says, I wanted someone hot and desperate. Uh, let me, let me play the rest of that. Clip I know from, when I got divorced, got... my goal oh, sorry, sorry. Uh-huh. That wasn't was it. to, ha- I'll get like if I was dating her, I I... she's a perfect person to so date alive. because she really wants to be a star and she's hot and all, and she was on Disney and it seems like everything should be going her way, but she still hasn't broken through. And I like those kind of women. You're a mess. Yeah, I like that. I don't want a really successful woman. Right, because if you have a really successful woman, she'll tell you to go fuck yourself and you'll have to take it. Hashtag goals. He wants somebody subservient with money. (laughs) Yeah, so he doesn't have to pay for them, but he can parade them around. I want someone who's kind of like, oh, shit, I can't believe I'm not more famous. I'm hot. I was a kid star. I can sing my ass off. Something's not working. You know what? You just need a really good relationship with me. That'll be good for you. And be hot, too. Like, she's always struggling, comes home from a long day. I can't believe I auditioned three times and I didn't get the part. Come on, let's go fuck. <laughs> That's Beth, right? Right. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about Beth, except she's not, she's not particularly hot or talented. <laughs> so. FHM, close down. All I'm getting is Twirl and Cats Weekly. Yeah, and then later Hampton's Life or whatever that one, that free one that they give out to everybody in the, in the fucking North Shore Animal League calendar. That one, that's that. The Beth story is one that I think we should do at some point because 
the the whole chronology of how she got work and there's certain things when you go in her IMDb. I have the mom caves, the pilot episode. Did you ever see that? Oh my God. Yes, it is. How in God's name did any executive think that putting somebody who's not a mom and not a designer and, and has the model. fashion and has the fashion sense of a five year old playing dress up think that it was a good idea for her to star in something called Mom Caves? And it is just as bad as you could imagine. Yeah. The failed it would be project like, list- it would be like having me in a show called Garage Life and I go into a car garage <laughs> <laughs> and you do your Jay Leno I, thing. Yeah, and I fix up the garage for your perfection and for what you need, even though I have no idea about cars or anything about fixing cars. Hi, I'm not a mom and I hate children. My husband hates children. Mom caves. Perfect. Done. Perfect. (laughs) Mom and cat caves. Um, Well, the the thing is, if you if you compare the two of them, who has more failed projects at this point, Beth or him? I think they're neck and neck. Yeah. I mean, she, he's clearly made more, more money off of his projects. But the fact that they, they did it so often and there, there, there was a point where Beth stopped getting gigs. Do you think this was they, ran, they just ran out of patience and said, fuck, we're not giving you any more. Just give her money just to shut her the fuck up. Or do you think she gave up and said, this ain't happening? Or she, and she knows that there was, there was some chicanery, chicanery or whatever around, whatever the fucking term is, to get her these gigs. Do you think she found out? And got pissed off? I think she always knew. I think okay. she always knew. And I think that no, no, the gigs dried up because nobody's looking for the same story about your love and mm-hmm. the dinner party and your cat bullshit every time. There's nothing new. There's no new information to you to give. The last press release that I've seen with her face on it was about how Tulum was pretty. <laughs> Tulum, well, Mexico. I- I think it's I yeah, mean, it's more likely it's more likely that they pulled every string they possibly could as if to say, look, if you're going to make it, make it here. But you're, it's not like we have the pull to get you on Friends back in the day or we have the pull to put you on, I don't know, King of Queens. You're just not talented enough. And you being Howard's girlfriend or then later wife is not enough. It just isn't because right, you're even, you stick out even, like a sore even though you live even though you live in Palm Beach in the Hamptons yeah we can put you on the cover twice or three times but when you have no new information or nothing about your life and the only thing you're doing is trying to open some cat edition that's not even open at the time what mm. are you going to say year after year she thinks getting kicked off of charities that bulldog charity they're like yep. see ya cocoa and <laughs> cocoa iced <laughs> cocoa and iced tea <laughs> They, they took your place. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what a shame. You're my star. You can be my star in bed. I'll worship you. <laughs> That's uh, more science fiction from the wig. Um, then there was this um, bit of hypocrisy that uh, Robin pointed. I think they were talking about... Um, it was politics all of a sudden. It was it was discussion this these days with the with the debates and stuff going on there. Th- that Nothing was, that worse was, than listening to him talk politics. It is pretty awful. And anyway, so Robin kind of called him out for something here. Hey. He said to the lady, her name, her name is Laura Bassett. He said to her that uh, uh, I should. Why does the king of all blacks king of all blacks always sound like he's like digging a subway tunnel? And talking through layers and they're, miles they're of They're freed him out of the mine. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with you a long time ago, but seeing you with this makeup on makes me, I, I think I could fall in love with you now. Is he, <laughs> is, he, is he on a boat in Niagara Falls by the waterfall? I mean, seriously. <laughs> or in a barrel going overboard? <laughs> Creepy. I mean, I mean, come on. It is creepy. Seriously. It's creepy. It is. You should tell him that. But why do you have to post He's such a bright guy. Well, doesn't he know you don't do that? I mean, what is... Look, you know, when the brain drains, uh, the blood drains from your head into that part of your body, it uh, prevents you from thinking clearly. But sometimes. I'll tell you, though, I, I, my blood drains yeah. every 10 minutes into that part and of my body. And you say a lot of crazy things. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. <laughs> 
You said to me a few moments ago, I don't care what Biden looks like. That's right. But you care about what every woman looks like. Oh, yes, I do. That's true. It's not creepy. It's just who I am. No, it's not a creepy thing. No, but my you're point taking is, two unrelated things. You're no, saying, no, no. My point saying, is that when a guy is the issue, and I talk no, about his looks, I don't care go, what Elizabeth Warren looks like. I don't care what he looks like. You don't care what Elizabeth Warren looks like because you're not. Because I'm not interested in her romantic. Life. That's right. But right. if she looked a certain way, you'd have to watch what she wore, and you'd comment on whether you liked it. No, or not. I would watch what I would watch. Personally, I would watch what Biden wore. Quite frankly, y'all. <laughs> we know. What? <laughs> no, you wouldn't, because you just said you don't care what he looks like. You dumb. Well, yeah, that's oh, the other God. thing. He's, he's, oh, he can't. He can't. You just contradicted yourself. In 90 seconds, he just contradicted himself, but also admitted, you know, you're looking at a guy. That was, uh, that was a good taking him to task. Robin has a very, very, when she does the take you to task voice, mm -hmm. if it's correct, it's really good. If it's it an is, issue it's that good. I agree on, it's very yeah. solid and strong. Robin, in a lot of ways now, it, with, if you think about it, chemo old age and a bit of senility and just being a bit of a, a dullard anyway to begin with have and this and the idea that next contract if he has to go somewhere or if he's going if he's leaving after the end of the year and she may not be coming along she might and she knows they're not friends they haven't been friends for 15 16 years not really personally friends um they th she's got nothing to lose by calling him out sometimes so she's allowed to do this once in a while but she, even she knows i can't do it too often and it has to be in a tone of voice and in a context where it doesn't seem like i'm attacking him and he puts up with it i don't think if he does go somewhere that she's coming with him no yeah and so it'll be a, a interview show or something so this um that was all for the the 3rd of march and then the 4th of march cuz we're almost finished this ladies and gentlemen um he um he finally admits something we've been saying for years that he completely disregards talk show hosts and uh barrels through with what he has to say and doesn't really care and make which makes him a fucking awful guest but he well, he doesn't say that so have a listen i'm a professional debater <laughs> You know, it, it, one of the things that if you ever watch me on a talk show, well, you're a professional something. At, He's a professional bullshit artist. Not He's, sure a professional He's, He's a professional martyr. He's a yes, yes. <laughs> Keep going, yeah, yeah. No worries. No, no. It used to be about really convincing someone. It's not of uh, your issue. The you know you ever watch me on a talk show? I barely answer the question they ask me. Barely. Like they don't even get to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, what the question never comes. And that last Bill Maher thing that he did when he was doing the rounds for the fucking shit book, it was um I couldn't believe Bill let him go on as long as he did. I would have filmed that thing until I got the answers I wanted from all the questions. And I would have kept them there for hours and let him filibuster for all those hours and edit it so that only my fucking questions got in and his answers came in. And I wouldn't let him leave. Or I'd say, Fuck really? off, don't ever come back. It really does intrigue me, though. Why do you think that all of these seasoned talk show hosts seem to get bamboozled multiple times, multiple years, same? You know what he's going to do. You should be prepared for this like a good defense in football or something. You know how he's going to come. You know he's going to go homo. You know he's going to sing. You know he's going to prance around like a little fucking wigged fairy. So why don't they have the ability to see this play coming way ahead of time and shut it down. Why right, do they keep, why is it he still intimidating them in showboating? The only two people that ever got on him was Tom Snyder back in the day, who just outright hated Howard. There was no question. That was actually a really funny video. And then um, Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly in 2006. Hannity he managed to a chop little bit. Down. A little bit. When with the pro somebody like Bob Costas really disappointed me when he interviewed Howard for that last little junket because Costas used to have a late night show. Uh, it was an interview show. The videos are still up on YouTube. You can find them, and it was great. He really was informed. He was like Brian Linehan in Canada. He was really, really fucking good. But um, a lot of them, I don't know if it's part fandom. Some of them. And I don't know if it's some of the other ones, they don't have enough against him. They don't want to really give him shit. 
they know it's, he's just there to plug, so why go after him? I think it's just more apathy than anything else. I know we always say we're glad that Carson never had him on because that would have validated some sort of comedian that he thought he was. But mm-hmm. I will say that I think I wish in some regards he had him on just to see how he would have handled him. Oh, it would have been like it would have been like a, a bull toying with a mouse or something. I mean, it, it just it just would have been hysterical to watch him go on there and try to filibuster. And they wouldn't have it. They'd cut the segment short. Johnny Carson, when he didn't like a certain guest or something, he'd never have him back on, first of all. Second of all, he would try to do whatever he could to make it peter out and bring somebody else. Because they always had a little extra bit. They could always have a person sing an extra song. People got bumped all the time on Carson. The show. closest thing I could ever think to having that sort of validation or fantasy is if Benjamin ever got into Howard's clutches. Oh. Oh, I Jesus Christ, yeah. Love, yeah, if I you stuck if you, if like you duct tape him, <laughs> Sure, if you duct tape him to a chair and you fill him full of fill him full of truth serum and he can't filibuster and just so, so just answer every fucking question. I don't even think you need any of that. Just put those two people in a room and see what happens. I guarantee. Oh, that would <laughs> be just so great. And don't feed Rope him. Rope a dope that motherfucker. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's irrelevant. No one's paying attention to the question. So he's talking about the, the talk show host. No one's paying attention to the question. The answer is he's not paying attention. He doesn't care. And this is not unusual. David Lee Roth wrote in his book about 1995. It's called Crazy from the Heat. It's a good read, but each chapter is a different story. And basically he was explaining to Henry Rollins how he doesn't so much do interviews as say stuff he wants in print or on the air. And that's Howard's the same way, but he was too stupid to he's not he's not as creative. It's just really he, it's he doesn't have information to give. He's just killing time promote. And as it was said, I believe uh, Benjamin unearthed the uh, Paul Colford audio where he said, unless he's got something to plug, he's not doing these junkets unless he's got something to plug. And look at all those things. I mean, back in the day, he would just to promote himself. But uh, after a certain point, he was either plugging something or you'd never see him on those shows. Right. Yeah. So this is the secret. I'm now giving you a secret. No one pays attention to what the other person is saying. You can I go on talk shows. I literally know the five things I'm going to talk about. And it's irrelevant what somebody asked me. It was a dead air. I'm sorry. (laughs) That was was like it sounds like. (laughs) A fish bubbling up and dying in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Thank you, Kyla. Have a good day. And I'm not okay. listening to Kyla either. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I'm not listening. Well, that that's also funny because he says no one's listening to the question. He, it, when he's got the in, interviews in, when he's got the people in, it's not like he's really listening to them either. He's got his checklist of questions, all therapy quest, therapized questions, and then you know bullshit like music questions that he asks every single one of them. A real intricate question you never really get from him. It's all about projection. Uh, And then the fourth, yeah, this is the same day. This was the Bobo unfollow Bobo movement, which had no legs whatsoever. They had Nikki Glaser in that fucking, she's such a dish rag skank. I cannot stand her. I don't find her funny. I'm sorry, ladies out there. I don't find most women, most women I don't find funny as stand-ups. And she's just like the latest Amy Schumer or, uh, fucking Whitney Cummings and uh, what's your take on favorites? her first of all? My, my most favorite stand up for a woman is Joan Rivers by mm-hmm. far yeah. I adore Joan Rivers ruthless humor her dirty humor was within reason and made sense and had purpose and it brought you to the next bit and call back and she was just sharp and funny and Joan Rivers was brilliant Toady Fields brilliant uh, right you know like, yeah, we're not talking comedy actors. Phyllis Diller. Phyllis, Phyllis Diller. Diller. I love Phyllis, Phyllis Diller. 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 Right. And so Fang. So great. Just she was great. fantastic. She but was fantastic. I watched somebody like Nikki Glaser. I am so tired about body parts and uh, or- orifice drippings being a part of comedy all mm-hmm. the time. It's like, okay cool come taste bad thank you or you like it or you had a lot of cock in you wow groundbreaking yeah it's amazing it's, 
It's 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 no different. The only difference is she's got tits and she's got a vagina and okay, and she's she doesn't look like uh, some some wildebeest. Uh, okay, fine, but that's the, every so often there's someone that they try to bring up. Now, the cycle is gone because Amy Schumer is finished. She's more like she did her she she got her fucking gratuitous money from uh, Hollywood for shitty movies, and now she's had a kid. She's fucking producing more swine and um she doesn't have to do comedy really anymore so she's fine and yeah. she can escape the plagiarism stuff because she slid under that everybody gave her a pass joe rogan who was it, un, the worst the worst one of the worst offenders norton of course that fucking weasel uh, i don't like how how rogan gets to be the messiah of who is ripping people off well, he, it it became because of that. It wasn't always that way, and he did have to suffer a little bit because of that that Mencia thing. I appreciate for I appreciate him for the Mencia thing. I'm saying that yeah. now because of that, he gets to say who's ripping people off or not, and what he says is really what happened. No, Amy Schumer did rip people off. Yes, absolutely. Right? Go and so on YouTube her... and watch it. It's yeah, right there for everyone. If she to see. didn't. Her... She didn't. The writers she employed did it. And so she's guilty. It goes from the top down, guys. Sorry. And you're supposed to own up to it. Anyway, I always got pissed off by that. So this was the thing where Bobo, sorry for the digression, everybody, that happens. Bobo admits in this clip that he's employed by the show. He's pissed off. The, the, the supposed premise is he's pissed off that the show Twitter account doesn't follow him and on Twitter. And we're supposed to give a fuck about Bobo's Twitter. First of all, didn't it wasn't it didn't it come out years ago that he and Marianne get money from the show for being called in like to being designated yeah. callers? Yes, they're supposed to be listening to the show at all times type of thing. And they're right. supposed to appear when they need him to appear. Absolutely. Know. Yeah. And so this whole thing is uh, and uh, then a wig admits he has nothing to do with the Stern account. Um, so then anyway, I'll play some of it. But I have something else that I want to ask you. Who is the gatekeeper for monitoring Stern Show on Twitter? Why is it that you guys are not following me? But you're following all the other whack packers. What's he talking about? Pete, high pitch. Well, first of all, if he is a whack packer, he, they don't pay the other whack packers. Bobo's getting paid. Even if it's a nominal amount, he's getting paid. Is that no, That's not a whack packer to me. Good point. Yeah. I have no idea. No. Whoever Stern manages show. Twitter has forgotten right. to follow him. Why do you Stern care? Show. White. Why do you And by the way, Fred Crowbar is so much stupid boboism, which is not funny. It's never been funny. Into this clip, I apologize in advance, everybody. Sorry, and Sam, again, the clip and again and again the clips the clips that he's crowbarring in sound so like a segue that shouldn't be happening. Sounds well, like an accident. Is, I, I think it's this like is somebody Fred on in the, the background fly. like Bob banging pots and pans you might as well just be doing that that's how non it, it does not, not sound good yeah no you care if the stern show follows you because i've been associated with the show almost 30 years how yeah. do you leave me out you i'm a super fan feet, marianne from brooke my best friend in the world captain jenks wolfie he's not even a a, a permanent uh employee bobo and did you get did you get that that's it that's a boom boom he's not even an employee okay so so now we have it. It's confirmed. And I, Bobo, I have nothing yeah. to do with the webs, the whatever that is. What is it? Instagram or Twitter? And of course, he knows about Twitter. He stood up on stage during that summit and was like, "We need to reach out to all these celebrities and create fake Twitter accounts." And he's pretending like he doesn't even know what's going on or what anybody has to do with that. You know exactly what's going on with that because you implemented some dumb getting things done plan with yeah. all of it yeah he knows all about twitter he knows everything about it and if you do an audit of his twitter account you'll find there's a couple of good websites there's one if you if you link your twitter to it it'll give you a more detailed breakdown of what's fake people that haven't responded on his thing and it's he's got 1.6 something 1.66 million twitter followers on his just his the howard stern actual one and it said 600 over 660 of them are fake just bots, you know what I mean? And that is such a low number for mm -hmm. a supposed famous person. Right, exactly. And so the conceit is that oh, okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get try to get people to unfollow Bobo's Twitter followers. So he had something like fifty five thousand Twitter followers, Bobo, and then by the end it gets down to five, and they made some noises about. 
oh, you know, well, uh, you, you, they made some bullshit about, well, 30% of your followers are fake, so that's why it didn't drop so much. Uh, but they made the a end, mistake the stern... by this bit. <laughs> Absolutely. They made a big they... mistake. Every time this they is, do... This is calcul... This could be calculated. This could be... Yeah. There's a metric. This is actual numbers. You can measure yeah. now your reach by this. Yeah, this and is it, dumb. And it made it made no sense in the same way his book coming out made no sense because he had to know. It's like sound scan in 1991 when they decided to start counting record sales instead of assuming what was number one. Finally, you knew what was being sold and uh, the um, the records could be counted. And it wasn't the old days where you could ship a million copies of something as payola to radio stations, just print up stuff and it never gets recorded. So the book, the Howard Stern Comes Again, while it sold, I don't know, I don't know what the final numbers for that, maybe a couple hundred thousand copies, I don't know, uh, 300,000. But it wasn't millions. The fact that it didn't even get to a million copies sold, I'm sure even on Kindle, would, is, a, is a huge bomb. I would never want that out there if I was wanting to parlay a, a future show to Netflix or something and show that I don't have any pull. And by doing this Bobo thing, if you had, as he said in the Summit video, 33 million listeners, you would have to assume that a third of those, maybe 10 million, or let's say even, fuck it, let's say 5 million of those people had Twitter accounts if they really had them, and that they'd all unfollow Bob Bobo, or most of them would. So, stupid. Like, to even respond back to me. How come Jason... Because I, here's I the deal. They the probably phone. follow certain people to keep tabs on them. And with you, we have Shuli who calls you all the time. We, we are fully aware of what you're doing. And also, I've just been handed this note. Bobo's name on Twitter is an ad for his cameo. Oh. And so, they probably said, fuck Bobo. We're not doing that. Nah, that's incorrect. Because I, what about years ago? This years is going ago? on a long time. Stop it. What, I mean, I'll let, just recently. What? You want to hear something insanely insulting? Yeah. It's going to go crazy. We, we follow Eric the actor, even though he's been dead for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but what is that? So, but isn't that also kind of showing how retarded they are with their own Twitter feed? Like they don't give a fuck about it? And that's how meaningless it is and inconsequential? Even though it's super consequential for every other podcaster or radio show to reach out to their fans, but okay, Absolutely. I guess you guys and, only and need it to reach out to celebrities that you pretend you don't want on your show. Got it. Yeah. So let's see. The, is there a real reason why it, it's kind of random? Isn't There's it? no rhyme or reason who we follow. It's random. We we uh, keep an eye on what everybody's doing, but we don't follow. We, everybody we don't we don't book guests. Guests come to us. We don't we don't right. we don't bother to garner guests they all come to us we don't know who's coming right okay. we don't make fake accounts and try to get people to come on our show because we're desperate sat down had a meeting and said let's not follow bobo that didn't happen so who is the person that hits follow it's several different people there, we have guys upstairs that work on our social media team they listen they may even hear bobo mm -hmm. today and they might go, ah, we might want to follow him or they might not i don't know what they're well why does bobo so there's no coordination whatsoever so we, we yeah, hand we off the we reins don't know. to someone We have else. seven, yeah, we have seven people at the helm of that shitty Twitter account, and we don't even know what's going on with it. They could be tweeting right. out, you know, whatever the fuck yeah. they want. We don't know. Right, right. This, this <laughs> that, them pretty much. GTD, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much, yeah, join the fucking revolution. Um, the, this, yeah, this is them admitting that they don't have any good communication within the organization even now. Like seven years after the summit video, that nothing's changed. Care if we follow him or not. Like, how I do you think. Yeah, you're going to say? Well, basically, the getting things done, Monica, you delegated the task out for social media, right? So now you have mm -hmm. seven people who run the social media account for Twitter, but they don't follow up on it. So it's basically hiring people on the honor system to do what's right by the show, but they're not reporting what they're following. They're probably only reporting what celebrities that they somehow managed to fish in to get in there. Yeah. Because which, we're all, we're, yeah, we're all like, that's really we're hanging, efficient. We're Super hanging efficient. on to Jeff Probst's every fucking word on Twitter. Um, and John Stamos, the, 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 the swinger King. He wants followers. He needs constant no, and mean, daily validation, Howard. Right. Like who would even, how, it's how would you even know? Like you're busy checking to see if they follow you. You, you want to know something is the truth. I did. So again, Stern gets rejected by social media. So he rejects social media. That's always the way it works. If he had fucking 10 million Facebook followers, he'd crow about that every goddamn day.
If he had 10 million Twitter followers, you'd never hear the end of it. So, but so that was, uh, we won't go through the rest of the Bobo thing because it's kind of boring. Now, this one of the last bits here um, was Chris Wilding showing Nikki Glazer how to suck dick. So Nikki G- Glazer comes in incredibly, doesn't, doesn't draw a single laugh. And uh, they have they start talking about Howard's favorite subject, which is blowjobs. And ironically enough, he starts talking about. I'll see if I've got it. Um, I'll see if I've got it. Uh, I I think I didn't get the clip, unfortunately. But he starts talking about how he hates. He he does like blowjobs. All of a sudden, now Stern starts talking about I oh, love blowjobs right. when the girl knows what she's doing. And then, mm-hmm. before, wasn't it, how many times did he say over the years, oh, it's demeaning, I hate, I don't like women to blow me and stuff like that. Anyway, this no, is... No, he, is... he just started saying that when Beth... <laughs> yes, she, when she decided she didn't want to blow his pelican dick. Chris, who works for us, says if we promise not to put the video out, he will come in and demonstrate how to suck that dick. All right, Chris, get in here. Please. Come on, earn your paycheck. Earn your, what's oh. it called? Uh, earn your green card. Oh, come on, God. get in <laughs> here. Sucks tons oh, of dick. Oh, my God. All right. So Nikki, excited. you're about he to get a left. He... Oh, Go ahead. He can't wait to, anytime Chris Wilding has an opportunity to be on, that gives Howard the license to talk about dick and sucking dick and say it as many times as he wants. It's he cannot wait to spill out the gay lingo. Cre- but Chris. shield, be- but shield behind the fact that it's because he is a gay employee. Right. Chris Wilding knows what side his gay bread is buttered on, and he knows if he wants to come up, he's he's got to come up with the fruity. He's got to come up with the fruity rye bread and uh, sandwich himself in between it, and and deliver himself on a platter for King Pelican Fruit Baby. And all the all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what like, would you what would you categorize that? the gayest loaf of bread? <laughs> <laughs> Pumpernickel. Hawaiian <laughs> rolls. <laughs> Is that is there a thing? Is that a thing? I've never heard of it. Oh yeah, I have them in What's my that? pantry right now. They're like What's sweet. That? I like to I like to make ham sandwiches on Hawaiian rolls. They're like sweeter. They have a yellow and the, they're probably all I'm, chemicals and terrible. Actually, you a lot of sugar. The, the gayest bread. I will not. I will not lie. When I moved to Asia, the first, one of the first things I saw was I, I, I needed the bakeries were not as as popular in 2000 and 2001 uh, here they weren't just they weren't that prominent and the bakeries were yeah they were more they tended to be sweet breads they just for whatever reason there's a bit of glaze on them and so they just weren't that delicious but there was one place it was an independent joint and it was like a mom and pop store and they had little loaves of bread outside and i said fuck just cut your own that's fine you don't have to i'm not that much of a, a lazy fuck that i can't cut my own bread so i take it home and um I, I, without looking, I cut it a slice and I pick it up and I'm going to eat it, but I'm not looking at it. I'm just, you know, doing the motion and I almost fucking vomit inside is cream, like whipped cream. Oh my I, God. Like not, a, yeah, like a, like a shitty Twinkie, but the bread part is kind of sweet, but the inside, the, the, the whipped cream came out and I just fucking flung, I spat, spat it out. I did a spit take, a Danny Thomas <laughs> spit take and I fucking threw it in the garbage immediately and I go, who the fuck would do this? Who's marketing? <laughs> Cream bread. That's probably What's the game. What's it gayest. called? What's the loaf of bread called? I don't know. Fucking Boston cream. I have no idea. There was shit in it. I didn't count on it. That's false advertising. That I'm sure in, in the language it did say it, that it was actually you know that it was cream bread. But who the fuck would buy that? Oh, oh. Wow. Here is uh, Chris. Chris <laughs> Wilding. You suck dick all weekend, right? Didn't you? I, I think you were with some. <laughs> listen, listen, to that. listen to the joy in his voice. <laughs> if he were watching the Super Bowl, he wouldn't get that much enjoyment. Guy, could who you imagine accepted... asking a female employee? So, <laughs> do you suck dick all weekend, right, Robin? <laughs> I think it was Benjamin said it. Yeah, just put a put a female in your mind and see if how this goes. This blows over in fucking Me Too 2020. Big cock. Uh, this is an Asian guy. Uh, it was not, it, well, no, it was a different guy. This oh. guy was just okay. Didn't you say you blew some guy recently where your neck was killing you because it was so big? <laughs> that was he's he's who's he's agonizing about this. Like, he why wants are you having show. a conversation with your employee about the blowjobs he's giving on the weekend? I mean, how does that even start? Yeah. I can't even imagine if my boss. <laughs> if I... I work with all guys and I can't I, even finish this. Just like, just use your imagination. Could you right. imagine if somebody said that? I oh, crying out loud. It's the guy who was supposed to come back. 
Show Nikki yeah. demonstrate yeah, what. Yeah, they call that cock lash. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of an open look. Look. So here's what you're going to do. And no video of this. I'm serious. Really? Why? Because <laughs> he's so upset he can't put this on a rotation in his gay library and just kind of play the g- gif again and again. I GIF, feel so. like for, I feel like Fred is like Billy in the movie Hocus Pocus when he's underground and then he comes back to life. Winifred Sanderson brings him back to life and he rips the stitches off his mouth. And the first thing he said is <laughs> he's like, bitch, witch. And, and that's like Freddie just can't wait to say cock, cunt. <laughs> Like, absolutely. And I, I, I think I'll, I'll quote Raven. God bless Raven and Josie on our site, uh, on our Facebook site, who do the um, morning threads, everybody. It's really fun if you get a chance to, to participate in them. And she, it's, she, she said it made me laugh. She typed it after after these shows when there's all kinds of cock mentions. I feel like I got to take a Silkwood shower. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go with more Chris. And on behalf of the rest of Canada, I apologize for Chris Wilding. I don't want to reveal all my secrets. I'm so sure. excited. No, I don't want it. video of me sucking a dick out there. But here's right. what you're going to do. Did so you, you once suck two dicks at one time? Yes. Yeah. All right. What? So this guy's so here's what you're going to do. So the guy, you know, the guy's here. He's hanging out. Uh-huh. So first thing you want to do is you want to tease him. You want to just lick the balls a little bit. So just kiss him. <laughs> lick if, 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 go ahead. If Nikki Glazer is that much of... She's basically a comedian porn star, okay? So but a shitty if one. she's that right. She's shitty okay. at sex and she's shitty at comedy, apparently. Why does she need a lesson on sucking cock if that's her whole her whole essence? That's her whole routine. Is she's she's a slutty comedian. So why would you need Chris Wilding because he's gay to teach her how to suck cock? No, Howard just wants to hear how Chris Wilding sucks cock. She was crowbarred in for that purpose because she was not adding a single laugh. And I'll tell you this much. There's an interview she did on Rogan, who's not the Holy Grail, but he does so many. There's You're bound to find some Rogan footage of somebody t- killing themselves on, you know, doing committing seppuku, Japanese ritualistic suicide on their show by their own words. And in this case, Nikki's on there and she's trying a bit that goes nowhere about, guys, when your girls suck your dick, even if they're not good at it, tell them they're goddesses and they're, they've never had a better blowjob because she's just going to do it more and she's going to like, she'll, she'll, you know, improve. And, and Joe's looking at her like, uh, no, they'll just continue to get shitty. Maybe they'll just get shitty blowjobs constantly and loathe every, every second of it because no one's telling her what not to do. And I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a funny premise and there was no, I don't, I don't want to be coached during that. I don't want somebody looking down at me and be like, Great job. Keep that up. Like, what? <laughs> Why don't you just watch a couple what? of porn videos and figure out how to do it? How hard is it? Trading on a dildo. Okay, and now you're, now you're kissing up the shafts. You're going. Okay. Now you go to the tip, sort of like where, where there might be some pre-cum here. How's and he you're doing, like, Ronnie? Fuck the kissing you shit. The, no, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, we got to get Ronnie more. We need another guy in the room to make it a little less gay. Yeah, you're getting them Why nuts now. Ronnie know? Yeah. Ronnie's Ronnie's always one of these like uh like they they treat Ronnie like he's Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Also too, now this brings it in. So even though Ronnie is not gay, it's essentially Howard's picturing Chris Wilding sucking Ronnie's dick. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, like what do you think of his technique, Ronnie? On the whole? Yeah, yeah you yeah, scoop yeah. out. There's going to be that's some come little pre come here. So you, you scoop, scoop out. out the Yeah. Yeah, and then if you want to be really hot, up. if you really want to be really hot, you go like, hey, can I suck your dick? And they go, like, oh, fuck yeah. So then that's when you start going in hard. So you lick up like that. Okay. Kiss. And just sort of. Tease it? Tease that. Oh. Tease it like that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Oh, just kidding. Do me a favor. Let too. Robin see this, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, think she's a- I feel like my ears have been raped. <laughs> Look at this. Let is- Robin see this? Isn't. Let Robin see this. Yeah. She's why in the does, glass why does a 70 year old cancer survivor with a coloscopy bag need to see this? <laughs> no one, no one, can, like, who's asking for this? This is how you're shopping yourself to Netflix. Robin, for you've been alive for 70 years. You need to know how to suck dick. What are, how old are these people? This is ancient. These are, people are so old, they don't need this lesson <laughs> i have a feeling when mr x with was, was with robin he would have put up with any amount of bl- bad blowjobs just to hear her shut the fuck up for a minute or that she wouldn't be able to shut the fuck up while she was 
while she was fucking deep throating his hog. <laughs> I just imagine, like, girls, honestly, a lot of us don't care as long as you shut the fuck up. I, I can just imagine Robin going, also, she, wouldn't shut, dude, she wouldn't shut up. This this advice, no offense, oh, just act like, oh, can I, can I suck your cock? I mean, why is that the end all be all? Why wouldn't you want somebody to be like, I want to suck your cock right now? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why? <laughs> Like take that dick nothing, out right now. I mean, no, I mean, I nothing better than a playbook. You, you can go both ways. <laughs> Maybe now you're at me. this point. I think Robin he's has slapping, a slapping, slapping on he's your slapping face, slapping on bit. your face a little bit. Now you're gonna be rock <laughs> no, fucking Ronnie, hard. No, Ronnie, you don't like that. Nah, you don't like the slapping. That's stupid. Now you lick. Here's here's the big move. You lick. Stupid. You're gonna lick. You're gonna lick all the way up and go and take it all the way down your throat. You ready? Okay. Here's what you do. Okay. Uh. Oh, well, that's a good move. Wow. Wow. Oh, Lord. That's great wow. radio. Great radio. Yeah. We can't see Fantastic. So we might as well <laughs> yeah, no be video. playing the fucking trumpet. <laughs> Why don't we have the puppets do, do the blowjob video? Is Howard not adept at that? So that's there's more of that. We're not going to play the rest of it because it's just vile anyway. But um, there's only two clips left. I don't, uh, just one Robin fucking up the word tack. Uh, let's Very see. bright woman, okay. Elizabeth Warren, but she does not get over the footlights. Well, she's taken the wrong tack. Or tact, whatever it is I'm saying. I just decided um, to throw that in there. With this and just berating I'm not gonna give Bloomberg. I'm not gonna give Robin too much shit because she corrects herself, which is fine. But um the other thing but I did think it was funny because she's her first her first thought is often the wrong one. Um there was a Spike Lee on the fourth. There was a Spike Lee discussion because he got escorted out of the uh the garden. Nick was it game. Madison Square Garden? Was it, it the was garden? The Nick game. Yeah, the Nick game, but is it still at Madison Square Garden? Uh, no, I I'm not in New York City, so I don't know. Uh, the Knicks yeah, I, are in. Um, I know that w the person who owns the that owns the Knicks is a part of a horrible musical act that Jim and Sam often make fun of. Okay. Uh, I can't. This is gonna drive me crazy now. Well, I gotta well either look way, I, Nick owner. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure it isn't anymore because they, they would want to play somewhere where there's more people can be in there. But um, he said you have to go up to the fifth floor. That doesn't sound like. It sounds like the the garden was so old you'd have to be on the ground floor back then. So, but newer places it might be part of a, an ex, a ex, existing structure, and so you can make. They more play. Money out of it. They play at Madison Square Garden. Oh, they do really. I never knew this. Okay, so anyway, he says you got to take the elevator to get up there, and there's a discussion. It's a five minute clip, and I don't really want to play it. But he actually was fair to, initially in the the third when he discusses Spike Lee. He starts talking about that. Just uses the clip about no one told me. Spike went and said no one told me, and he admits the only good thing about this clip is he admits, look, Spike pays for his tickets. I get in for free, and I'm happy to do with, with whatever they whatever they. Um, whatever they give me. And he, so he's saying, I'm not a basketball fan. I just want to be there. I just, I'm yeah. happy to be there. And I don't pay for you, my fucking tickets. Spike Lee was, you, was right to get pissed off. It's an unfortunate video, but he was, he's a fucking, he pays hundreds of thousands of dollars for his tickets and he loves basketball. He loves the Knicks. So. Right. I would be, I would be pissed off too if I was a loyal fan that played a lot of money, especially when the franchise sucks. I mean. Sucks. And has sucked hard for decades and is still like, that's why I never understood f l Toronto Maple Leafs fans and Nick fans who will attend when the game, the team's shit. I'm sorry. If you got an organization that's fucking up your team, you don't support them by going to every fucking game. You may watch the games to see how bad they are or whatever, but I would not pay money to support a team that wasn't going in a direction that I didn't agree with. I just wouldn't. My wife was ready to give up the Islanders because they were doing so horribly. And now they may, it, I don't know if the NHL will any sport, uh, league will pick up after this coronavirus thing. By the way, everybody, be careful out there. I'm like that yes. dude, Hill Street Blues. Um, but um, Michael Conrad. But the it's uh, she was ready to give up on them because the the fucking franchise was going into the tubes. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you don't do that unless you really find that the franchise is not doing right by the fan. And so, so for Spike Lee to get upset about that, I don't blame him. There's some scuttlebutt about the new owner of the Knicks and how. He might have a problem with Spike. I have no idea. But I wouldn't treat a paying customer the way he treated him. No, not at all. 
and one of the more high profile ones. I mean, let's face it, last, what, two years ago, Black Klansman was still made almost $100 million. That was a Spike Lee film, and later on, Spike Lee, that actually got good notices and good reviews and made money. And he's a, a legendary director, whether you like his films these days or not, is, is besides the point. Uh, he's still got some pull in Hollywood. What pull does Howard have? Uh. And since he does pay a fucking nickel for his Knicks ticket. Anyway, is there anything more uh, to add to this, Sam, uh, peripheral to the actual breakdown that we did or um, something that's, I think we got pretty much everything, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did a fantastic breakdown and I loved laughing with you during this. It's great. It's the only thing that makes listening to this joyful, by the way, because during it, it's suffering. It's nothing but suffering. my Southern Ontario accent. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't even know. People say that, and I don't know what that sounds like. I, I mean, okay, everybody, if you come from Syracuse, do you have a, do you, can you tell a Syracuse accent? I have no idea. Within people New can, York. You can tell can you I'm tell? from Western New York. Yeah, people always, you, when I say I'm from Buffalo, they could tell. It's something like hard A's, kind of nasally, but. Mm. Uh, okay, so, okay, say drama. Drama. Okay, but that's not an affectation. You're not changing how you'd normally say it. No, why would I? <laughs> what, what about, okay, let me, uh, I'll, I'll throw one at you. Uh, the thing you. What's the thing you use to check the day? A calendar. Calendar. Oh, calendar. okay. There you go. There's an example. Calendar. Okay. Uh, the um, uh, country famous for making pasta and pizza. Italy. Okay, uh, but uh, and so people from Italy are called Italians. Okay, there you go. I still have people. I still have Americans saying Italian. It fucking drives me I, up the wall. The I same way when Brits when when Brits say schedule, I fucking I I want to put my I wouldn't be like that guy putting the mo- fist through the monitor. I cannot but stand I, schedule. Well, I'm Sicilian though, so Viva la San Giuseppe today. I'm sad because my family always gets together for that holiday, and yeah. uh, it's we need this holiday right now. It's a healing holiday. Uh, Saint Joseph magically heals you. Apparently, uh, if you bring him to the front of the table, you bring the sickest family member up to the altar, and that's kind of supposedly the mysticism of it. But it's not happening now because of all this. So yeah. Yeah, and I'm a little pissed because uh, let's see, it's over here. It's the 20th right now. It's it's now it, in an hour. It'll be the 20th over there for you. Uh, but on the 25th is Greek Independence Day, Ikuspende Martiu. And outside of Greece, it's still a huge holiday for the diaspora, all the Greeks uh, around the world. And uh, from me to you, Chronia Bola, na pernate kala, prosechite. Be careful of this COVID 19 thing wherever you are. And everybody, all of our fans that. Um, that are out there and you're worried about the coronavirus, just do what the World Health Organization says and keep it's it's tough to be isolated when you have like 24 hour fucking cable news channels and ice box f- full of food. And if you're worried about what so your ass, we made sure we're doing the Im- <laughs> we made sure we're doing the important work of entertaining you with this we're nonsense. Trying, <laughs> yeah, we're trying our best. So what we're going to do is we're going to try next week uh, sometime in the middle of the week. We're going to get through the weeks in review of the following week, which I think was the eighth, ninth, because there's only two days he took off the Wednesday and we'll discuss why we think that next week in the next installment so until then I've been Fillmore I'm Sam and have a good one everybody take care my real passion is my hobby really what's that I work with retards hey folks just two quick corrections before I take too much shit on YouTube didn't want to edit them in because it just didn't seem right, but I thought I could add them at the end just so people don't think I'm a complete retard. I mixed up 17 days and 200 balloons and called it 17 balloons. I mixed up my Prince B sides, so sue me. And um, the video, Frank Zappa video in question, is called A Token of His Extreme. And I was thinking of the version of uh, Stinkfoot, which is on YouTube from 1974 that predates all the Peter Gabriel sledgehammer stop animation um, that is so groundbreaking by about 12 years.